Live from FedEx Forum in the American Home Shield Studio, this is the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com. Presented by Direct Auto Insurance. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon. Noon on GrindCityMedia.com. It's Chris Vernon Show. Welcome, 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 welcome. And we have a uh, fun one today. Today on the show, we'll talk about the events of last night, which was a 16-point win for the Memphis Grizzlies against the hapless Minnesota Timberwolves with no answer for the stunning backcourt of John Morant and Dylan Brooks. We've got a lot of news that we're going to get to today, um, including Antonio Brown's great meeting with the NFL, I guess he had. In addition to that, Lang Whitaker and Rob Fisher will be in studio. We'll play Phil in the Blank Sucker. And at 1 o'clock, the head coach of the Memphis Tiger football team is Mike Norvell. He's going to join us. Turn it up! Everybody's having a good day. Well, Bruce Feldman really helped the situation this morning as uh, Mike Norvell is going to be joining us in the studio at 1 o'clock today. And he threw out there that Florida State, who recently fired their coach, Willie Taggart, might have interest in Mike Norvell. So the show is changing a little bit. We were going to talk about the season that they're having and the playmakers that they have and game day and everything that has taken place over the course of the last week and what they have ahead. But instead, I'm just going to get down on my hands and knees and beg him for 30 minutes uh, to uh, not leave us. (laughs) I think that's what we're going to do here today on the show. But no, uh, Mike is going to come hang out with us today at 1 o'clock. It was a fun night at FedEx Forum and then woke up to the news that the Grizzlies drafted Michael Jordan. Um... John Morant, the second player in NBA history to average 20 points a game and five assists while shooting 50% from the field through his first seven career games. The only player to do that. Yes, Michael Jordan in 1984-1985. So, good company for John Morant, who uh, put on another show last night for those that attended or watched on TV. Before I get to anything, I welcome John Roser to the show. John Roser, a.k.a. the Cologne Ranger, a.k.a. the Body Pretty Bandit, a.k.a. Senior Sack, a.k.a. Johnny Backpool, Johnny Bearcat, a.k.a. John Snows, with the Grim Roser, John Hustle, Johnny Asparagus, Johnny Net Carb, a.k.a. John Falcon. What up? Hello. No. Oh, look at that. Look at, look at how clean he looks today. By wearing something that he has not worn 17 consecutive days. The ratty 49ers hoodie. I haven't worn that all week. (laughs) Devin Walker's here. He is the microphone mangler. He is Senor Quasadilla. He is Mr. Observant. Yes, hey, speaking of being observant, did you see Johnny Johnny Blazer last night? No. Johnny, you didn't see Johnny Blazer? Oh, I did see the video. Johnny yeah. Blazer was killing the game last night. Johnny Blazer. Let's yeah. go. Look at him. Let's go. Did you go buy a Blazer? No. Oh, well, you I've had got, one. I've got a couple. Ooh. Yeah. He's, got, he's got a couple. I've got multiple I've got, Blazers. I've got a couple. I've he's, got two 
Then I've got the black velvet coat. Oh, 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 oh. oh snap. Don't make, me break this, don't make me break that out. Is that velvet? And then I've got a, uh, I've got like a light brown jacket where okay. when I wear it, my friends call me the professor. Oh. Because yeah. I look like a co- I do Break look out the like monocle college, too? I do look like a college professor. This man has three blazers. Johnny, Vel- Johnny blazers. In case he needs them. Yeah. Let's go. Never know when you're going to so need a blazer. blazer. Johnny Blazer. <laughs> Maybe Who when knew? we play Who the knew Blazers. Johnny Bla- when he walked in, I was like, oh, snap, Johnny Blazer. Has anyone ever been more proud since we busted on you? Your turn. Let's go. Has anybody been more proud about talking to a group of kids <laughs> that didn't pay any attention yeah, to them okay. than Devin and, Walker? And, and here's where I'm going to hate <laughs> we a little did, bit. We, we did that. And we didn't even mention it. Oh. Like, like, it didn't even happen. And this dude won't stop Instagramming about it. I do it for the kids. Screenshotting DMs from the kids. Yeah. I do it for the kids, man. Bro. And, and, and I, you know, the first thing I said to him, right? Of course, it was about me. It's like, <laughs> so how many times did you tell them that I saved you from a failing radio station where you would have had to have been the producer for some show you didn't want to be a producer I, for. I told them and about my journey. No, it, uh, my journey. My journey. It's the most important part. I told them about the my journey. The most important part was... <laughs> You're like two years into your journey. Thank God. <laughs> thank God I interned for Chris Vernon. Thank God I worked hard and I, and I liked him. And thank God he saved me <laughs> when my career was going literally nowhere. And now I am flourishing. I t- and, and I owe it all to him. <laughs> and my advice to you kids is to attempt to get an internship <laughs> with him one day. Yeah, you could be you could be tweeting Celine Dion gifts for the for the river. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you could be doing. That's yeah. what you could be doing. Hey. Call in to Steve and Karen or whatever <laughs> and uh, for some uh, you know, a Bonnie Raitt ticket. Yeah. That's what you I could be doing. Nothing fun. wrong with Bonnie Raitt. But I did tell I, I told them guys, look. I got Subway. I did everything. Uh, oh, that's what he freaked <laughs> up. Did he went and got a Subway a couple times? Did you tell him I paid for yours every time? Yeah. I did. <laughs> I told him all the all the good he stuff. Did, he left that out. I broke down everything. He, no, he's like, oh, I had to go and pick up Subway for guys. And it was like, oh, we're all starving. Dev, will you go pick us up Subway since you ain't doing nothing anyway? <laughs> Here's my credit card. Yeah, and it's not like we sent you to Carterville. Like, we sent you a block down the road. <laughs> this hey. dude, this you dude, to drive a block. This I dude did. is walking in the snow, mile each way to Subway. That's what I had to do just to it's, earn, earn my key. <laughs> here's, here's the other thing I'm going to hate on, too. I, I, to I love Chris. the kids, man. I love yeah, yeah, okay, well, here's the other thing I got to hate on with this, too, because I saw these videos. I saw these pictures. Yes. And we talked talked about when we had to do it too uh-huh. we both forgot that we were doing it that day he had to run to old navy at I poplar did. and highland yes. to get to get an outfit yes. to That's get right. to get pants and a sweater he did i had to run home to put on a button down and jeans yeah johnny blazer dude you're just standing up there in sweatpants a grizzlies hoodie and a white nike hat swag unbelievable swag and guess what? Wait, hey. wait, you live two seconds. Hey, Why did you hey. have to go home hey, and guess put what? on these? You know what those kids what, Who wants to be that guy? He dresses like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but guess what they did, though? That but guy dresses fair, like in, me. In fairness, I went I, to Old Navy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. In, in defense of, my, of myself, first of all, they, they related to me a lot more because I, did, I look, did look more comfortable up there, by the way. Second of all, I'm trying to do for these kids what y'all did for me, which is – Pave, uh, oh, pave for the way. Sakes. They related <laughs> to me because I was dressed in a hoodie. <laughs> uh, they related to you because they see you at Tin Roof every Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> I like high school kids. <laughs> Who do you think's in there? <laughs> oh gosh. But yeah, it was fun though. I had, I had a good time. Have, they probably dropped out of school today. Like, no, what's that, that kid? what's that place you used to go to? The one over on oh, Island. The Bluff. That's young. Woo! No. I oh, did you ever go? What was it? Electric Cowboy? That was a spot too. <laughs> Have fun there back in the day. What does it do? But yeah, shout out to the kids, man. We'll do it for the kids. Oh, we know. Impact the we youth. Know, we know you're impacting the youth and doing it for the kids. You know why we know that? Because you tell us every freaking second. For the youth. Impact the youth. Hashtag. You know the vibes. Impact the... No, we don't know the vibes. <laughs> the vibes this, are known. This dude did one speech to a bunch of bored-ass high school students, and he's hashtagging impact the youth. I mean, if, if, if we talk to a group of old people, I'd probably be the most popular. Bro, <laughs> this man, this man said I went and got Subway. No, okay, that was, that was, if I could read 
what do you call it? Transcribe my entire speech. I guarantee y'all would appreciate it. It, it was like a subway is like a block away. It, there's like never a line either. <laughs> it's like you walk in there. I, I it's like one employee's like sitting on her phone. The other one's in the back doing whatever. Here's the other part. I bought his. And the reason I get to bitch about this is because my first internship was at a sports radio station. And there was a guy there who was like an old-timey uh, – on on air sports guy right like yeah. uh he was a tv guy doing radio that like that's at the beginning of sports radio that that was pretty well like somebody that had a name in town and so they yeah. put him on the radio right yeah. and so they had put two tv guys from different channels on one was from uh, channel 11 one was from channel 5 and they had a show in the morning and so i went and i was the intern for that show at, 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 at kfns and I remember I, I like walked in and um, uh, the guy's name was Rich Gould. And he says to me, he's like, hey, kid. And I was like, hey, hey well, nice to meet you, Mr. Gould. You know, I mean, I grew up watching him on TV and whatnot. Right. And he's like, I need you to run down the street <laughs> to the gas station there on the corner. And he's like, and I need a Diet Coke with a lot of ice. And I was like, um, uh, OK. And I like walked out and I was like, uh, Rich just told me to get him a Diet Coke with a lot of ice. And they're like, well, just go get it. And I was like, well, he didn't give me anything. And I was like, I just, I just and they're like, well, just pay for it. And I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> I don't have any money. I was like, I was like, A, I'm driving to the gas station to get this guy a Diet Coke. B, he's not even going to give me the money to get him the Diet Coke. Yeah, like, I was like, this is what interning is? I'm the one working for free. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, so in yeah. fairness, that is why I would always buy your stuff when yes. you were an intern I, I and you it. i would always buy everybody's stuff when they were an intern because this guy scarred me because <laughs> i walked in and i was like what I'm, i mean i resented him so much <laughs> and i was like nobody's ever gonna resent working with me <laughs> and so shout out to rich Gould. i wonder whatever shout happened to him. To i don't him. know but he's the one yep a Diet Coke with a lot of ice. What was his name? Rich, Rich Gould. Gould. Yeah. Shout out to him. Rich Gould. For I, me, I need uh, a diet. He said, I need a Diet Coke with a lot of ice. That's who you owe it to, actually, yeah. in retrospect. Shout out to him. Shout out to Rich Gould. <laughs> Is he in Massachusetts now, Rosa? I have no He's idea. He's the sports director at News 11 in St. Louis. He's been that for 50 years. Yeah. I'm not kidding. He has been there since I was a child. By the way, he 100% looks like the dude who would tell you to do that, too. <laughs> to eat. That's what he did. He looks like he probably also... Rides a motorcycle. I don't know. I don't think so. Show didn't last that long. The guy he did the show with ended up doing the show by himself, and he's done it for the last 35 years, I think. Wow. Frank Cusimano is his name. It was, it was Frank Cusimano and, 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 and Rich Gould. And then Cusimano did a show with Bernie Miklas, the longtime columnist for a long time there. Nice. Um, anyways, but yeah, that was my, that was my internship uh, back in the day. Anyways, last night was a fun night at FedEx Forum. Very good for the point differential as the Grizzlies get a 16-point win. And let me tell you something about that Minnesota team. Um, a, desperately needed either Jeff Teague or Shabazz Napier. They were without both of their point guards. They ran the rookie, Jarrett Culver, really to try to get them into the offense last night. They have very little defensive tenacity, and they don't have a leader. They don't. Because there were a lot of moments in that game where you need somebody to step up. And that yeah. is not Wiggins' personality, and that is not Towns' personality, and that ex it is everything that Jimmy Butler brought to the table, yeah. right? That will, that heart, that this isn't happening to us type of – that guy. Yeah. yeah. You got a lot of guys – you know, like the guy – look, on that team, if I'm picking – I mean, Covington's – a dog. Yeah, he is, yeah, right? Is the one. But, I mean, he's also not great. So, he's not going to be the guy that's, you know, barking at everybody, telling everybody, hey, here's what we need to be doing. Um, and you can just see, like, like last night even, right? Like, you saw – and this is just a how you are wired thing. Are you wired to be that kind of a guy? Like, are you, you a pit bull, right? Like, this isn't happening to us. And – you see Morant has that in spades. And you see that with Wiggins and Town. They ain't got it, man. They ain't. Like, I mean, stuff's going wrong. Stuff's going bad. The lead's getting bigger. And they're sulkers. Yeah. I watch this stuff in every game. They are not, yo, screw this. 
give me the damn ball. We, we are not losing it to the freaking Grizzlies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, look, there are nights where the Grizzlies, well, most recently, we just saw their worst three-point shooting night, I think, ever in terms of volume, three for 25 in that game against Houston the last time they played. And I said, look, they hit five more in that game. That's eight for 25. That still sucks. But they win the game. <laughs> yeah. And last night was the progression to the mean, as they say, because they, they shot great from three, including some four-point plays last night. Um, the other thing about that Minnesota team, uh, th- this is just what I heard. Ryan Saunders won their head coach. Not happy after the game. With the refs? Just no, not happy oh. with his team. Well, he shouldn't be. Yeah, not happy with his team. It was a ridiculous and effort. And from Come what on, I you heard. Give, you give up almost 130 to the – I mean, yeah, look. Oh, 140, well, almost 140. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, 140 yeah. points in regulation. They have yeah. given up eight of their last nine quarters of basketball played. They have given up 30 points or more. The only quarter they didn't give up 30 – the third quarter last night when they gave up 29. That's incredible. To the Grizzlies. Wow. That like is their absolute. defense is just, I mean, it has been non-existent. They like don't it's have been that. brutal. They don't care. Yeah, they don't have that and dude, I'll man. say Ryan Saunders, not happy after the game last night. However, I did hear that Minnesota locker room, because we have, we have guys that go in there and get audio for us and everything. Um, music playing, a lot of laughing, goofing around. That's who they are. Yeah. Think they do that with Jimmy Buckets in that locker room? No, he's punching somebody in the face. I can tell you when the Grizzlies lose, that locker room is silent. And then with the Grizzlies are a team that are supposed to lose games this year. They're supposed to lose. But they're upset about it. They're upset about it. Yeah. Uh, so Valanchunas was the life of the locker room last night. Easily the worst Jaron game ever. 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 You know what I mean? Got the two early fouls and then came back in the game and pulled a Shelvin Mack, which was – the lead was like 14, and it disintegrated until he went back out of the game. I mean, he was just out of sorts. He was the only player. To, there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 30, I mean, every, he was the only player to play in that game that did not score, except – Jalen Noel for the Timberwolves, who played the last minute seven and didn't He's do the only anything. That had he, he, he didn't do plus anything. Too. Like He's Jaren's, only Jaren's the only one to actually play minutes in the game well, and not score. Well, like and, real that, minutes. And, and and you know sometimes we talk about single game plus minus. We see that single game plus minus last night. It was like sometimes that number will tell you the truth, and the truth was, you know, it it wasn't his night. Now. Th- and it was Brandon Clark's, yes. for that matter, who, who played with a very high motor and was extremely good and, you know, made all the shots, too. I mean, he was 7 for 7 Perfect. last night. Some of those rim off. But, I mean, he's, he's got that 8 foot and in the touch, yeah. pretty the well touch down. touch on that floater, man. He really serious. does. And he was a very, very high percentage, field goal percentage guy in college, right? He does what he does well, and he gets to his spot that he knows he can elevate and make the shot. The reactions... And that, then, now this is one of those where I, I have been hard on Jaron, and because I am so high on Jaron, I think Jaron is going to be a great, great player in this league. I know he has that level of talent. Um, I was upset about the fouls in the, at the beginning of this season. Um, clearly, last night, you know, you cannot get so discouraged that you can't help your team, and, and that was one of those nights. But this is a terrible seven-game stretch. And that's all that is. I mean, I saw this. I saw him last year. I saw what he is capable of. I also see what his birthday is. <laughs> and the negative reactions to him thus far this season are incredible. It's like, what is – did y'all he's, forget what happened? He's still – it's his second year. He's still the youngest player. The people on the team. that are on Twitter, like, because I, I scrolled down Twitter last night a little bit, and it was just, no, he, what's wrong with J- is Jerry? Not good anymore. I'm have, like, come on, bro. Look, can we look, not? Can we not do this game? No, you have some people that you know that's just going to be their reaction anytime anybody plays badly, right? Guess how many you got last night about Dylan Brooks? The last time Dylan was horrible from the field, I got tons of them. Trey, Dylan, why are we doing Dylan, with this? Yeah. The Dylan Brooks, yeah. Dylan Brooks is not an NBA player, but you know what I mean. Like, so that is part of being a professional athlete and what it is like. You know the other thing too. That has played a part in this, which is interesting. Which now, guys with crappy games, it is accentuated. You know what it is? What? I just thought about this last night, too. 
it's daily fantasy. Oh, I'm serious. All people, yeah. Yes. I get it. I had a guy last night has nothing. He couldn't care less about the Grizzlies. He's like, why isn't Jaron playing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and why does he care? Yeah. He's not a Grizzly fan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I get that a lot. And I get questions all the time about like, hey, is so-and-so playing tonight? Is so-and-so playing? And I know that's what it is. What do they care? Yeah, what do you care about? And it's not gamblers. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's people that play that stuff. Yeah. And people, and so when you have a terrible game, it is really accentuated now because people now are betting on you having good games. Because you've had so many good games in the past. Yes. Yeah. You're stat filler, right? Yeah. Um, so anyways, not a, good, not a good night for Jaron, but I am, look, you're not going to hear me say a discouraging word. That kid is going to be an amazing NBA player, and this is a terrible stretch. And that's yeah. all this is. Yes. Um, you know the other thing that I thought about last night's game? Was beyond the John Morant being amazing, him and Dylan being good as tandem last night, them doing all that they did despite the fact that Jaron had his worst game of his career, I think he will come back and he will come back very strong and all these people will be on his nuts when he you know, scores 30. Yep. I'm t- hey, I'm taking screenshots. That'll Just let y'all know. I'm taking That'll screenshots. Happen. That will happen. You know the other thing that I thought last night, and we have not thought about this at all, then I didn't tweet it out or anything, but I thought about it. As we were, as I was driving home last night, I don't know why this came. Oh, I know why it came into my mind. I was listening to the new podcast series that Bill Simmons has put out, The Book of Basketball, um, which is great. And his second episode is with Steve Kerr. And he talks about the Chicago Bulls teams, and he talks about playing uh, in San Antonio. And then, of course, he goes way in depth into Golden State and everything that happened there and – you know, the different years and Durant and what's special about Curry and Draymond and about, you know, teams and about this, the, the secret, right, which is the genesis, the thesis of the book of basketball, right, that when you go back and you read the books of the great players, whether it's Bill Russell, Bill Bradley, or you listen to them talk, whether it's Larry Bird, Isaiah Thomas, or whatever, that the secret is that it's not about basketball, right, that it is about the team collective and who is willing to sacrifice and that we now we look at basketball and we judge everybody by their stat line and their numbers right but how do they affect winning how does it work as a team are you willing to take a little bit of a step back in order to and so during the course of all of this he is talking about he mentions at one point he goes Kerr goes on this uh long discussion about how amazing Iguodala is, uh, as a teammate, defender, best defender he's been around besides Scottie Pippen, et cetera, et cetera, right? And, you know, I'm listening to all this, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, like, geez, man, I know the check's cash, but, like, why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? You know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? It is fun, Mm. and Morant is fun. I mean, I could just imagine, if you're watching that on TV, like, really? You'd rather just not play at all? And... Uh, part of me was thinking, like, they, boy, if they had him, they'd be pretty, they'd be pretty good. Yeah. He'd help. Seriously, like, if you threw him into the mix with that team, he, he would really help. Yes, he would. And he gets a paycheck every two weeks. Yes. And I was just thinking, yeah, I get it, man. You only want to play for good teams or whatever. And But, like, you know, there is something fun about playing basketball, and that is a fun group yeah. who's like a bunch of cool dudes and – you know, nobody wants to see Jay Crowder and, and Iguodala on the wings guarding you. you know what I mean? like, <laughs> they really don't. Two lockdown defenders. Like, yeah. I actually think he would really help that team. I do. And it kind of, I don't know. There's just a, like, bro, they're going to trade you anyway, right? Like, it's not like you're being held hostage forever. But, like, why not play? And why not be, you know, have fun playing basketball and play with this group? And you watch them. I mean, I can only imagine. Like, I, I don't know. If I was the front office, I, maybe the ship is, ship is totally sailed. But I would be like, yo, man, why don't you, right? You're complete. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> flip us on lead pass, man. Like, you could help us, and you could really help these young guys. And it's not, it's not for the whole year. You know what I mean? It comes up in December, and then, like, you come, you play well, and, and we'll move you. You know what I mean? But, like, just be a good citizen and, you know, be a good teammate, and we could actually be pretty good. You may actually like this. Like, how would you not have fun, like, in yeah. a game, like, like last night? Like, like, they are a bunch of likable guys, and I tell you, if you stuck him in that lineup, that'd be pretty damn good. There are moments, because here's the thing. 
this is what we did not expect. Morant's already good. Very, yes. very good. Like, it's not I like... He's this a little, is, like, might I mean, be a little better than good. <laughs> no, no, but what, yeah. I, what I'm saying is it's not like... This ain't a Conley thing. Yeah. We're going to look up, and it might take three, four years. He's doing... Like, he's do, I was talking to Chris Harrington last night and uh, Amari Sankofa. We were talking in the locker room, and we were saying how, they, like, Harrington brought up, he's like, dude, John's doing stuff in his first seven games that it took five years for Conley to do. He could be an all-star by year two. Yes. Yeah, because he, he's already like, changed that's the way he's attacking he the rim. Like, he, like, last night, he could have tried to do the little dunk thing where he rose and just laid it up because he's already learned. Like, he's learning from game to game. I can't be out here... He, he and everybody. Conley, it took Conley a while to really He's develop learning, the man. confidence in himself that he can really play at this level. Ja has it. Like, ja just wants to go right at And that is time. the thing. Everybody walks out of that arena going, oh, my God, we, we have a real superstar in the making. Yes. Like, he really is. I mean, he's really got a chance to be a superstar. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. Shout out to Roser on that one. Yeah, got, got our Put man Justin rotation. to play it. It's in the rotation now. Shout out to Rosa for got that, Got him to man. play 12. 12. I, I heard it. I heard it last <laughs> yeah. night. I loved it. Um, anyways, you know, look, that was a fun night, and they have been. You know, the the Houston one, at, you know, the, uh, the nut chop and then the dagger by Harden there at the end. But that was at least, you know, within a couple of possession game. That one was. And then you have... The Chicago game, which was, uh, you know, one-point game with a minute left to go. And then you have the Brooklyn win. And you have the Phoenix game. Yeah. yeah. Pahonix. And that was not great. Yeah, it was like but, it was always between like 9 and 12, but you never felt like now, you were ever going to win the game or had a chance to. That one wasn't great, but I would say like the majority of these games – Clearly, they got two wins, but they've been competitive. You yeah. know what I mean? And and Morant has been just out of his mind. It's been yeah. fun, man. In these games, right so far. So at least it's not. Look, in a in a season where you're not going to have a ton of wins, um, they're competitive, yeah. and and it's even more important to be competitive at home because the next step is being competitive on the road, which they have not been. They haven't even been in a game, have they? I mean, they got uh, drilled in Miami. They got drilled in L.A. What was the other one? Uh, it was. There's schedule. one other road what's game, what's right? Schedule. Miami and L.A. were disasters. Are those only two? There's only two road I games. I think those might be the only two road games. Yeah, I think. Because L.A. was a one-off. Yeah, yeah. I think. Is that Miami, right? Yeah, Miami and yeah. L.A. Miami That's the only two games they played on the road, so they play Orlando tomorrow night. Yep. Okay. And I've noticed too, like if this game gets to the fourth quarter, you if it gets to the fourth quarter, and it's a game. Jaw close it. Like he's like number yeah. three in the NBA in fourth quarter scoring. Like he, like you said, he has that dog mentality. So if you can get the game to the fourth quarter, it makes some shake. Right. He's got a guy. You've got a guy that can take over the game. Yeah. At least uh, on your end or match the others. Um, last thing before we get uh, get to a break, and, and Lane Whitaker and Rob Fisher are going to be here, and then as I said, Mike Norvell is going to join us. Um, one of the big stories NFL wise this morning was that Antonio Brown was going to have his meeting with the NFL. I was telling Devin about this earlier. Did you see this, Roser? Evidently, the meeting went great with Antonio Brown and the NFL because he left the meeting, and this is what he tweeted. Imagine conforming to a system, giving it 100% to see them treat me like this unfairly, making money off my sweat and blood. F the NFL. I'll never play in that ish. Treat black people the worst. Clear my name and go F yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a good meeting? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Who could have imagined that? A, a meltdown after the meeting. I, I w- mean. I wonder if he had the same energy in the meeting. Bro. This man told the NFL, I'll <laughs> never play in that <laughs> again. Go F yourself. Yeah, this dude's. He's He's wild. Is he going to be in the XFL? He huh? said he's he going to play in the no, XFL. He, he tweeted about them a few weeks ago. Said he's never going to play in that league either. <laughs> well, what the hell is he going to do? I mean, the <laughs> AAF is gone. Is the CFL's like his only option he now? Gonna play five football. What's he going to do? I mean, I, I honestly, I don't think, you know, all those guys they were like older when they sabotaged their careers completely. You know. Yeah. Like and, and this is obviously like 
there's no argument. This isn't noble in the least. Even if you want to say, I don't agree with the way Colin Kaepernick went about it. Like, Colin Kaepernick's, you know, his career, which was, he was in the middle of it, which it wasn't like, he wasn't like, I mean, it wasn't like Tom Brady or something, right? Yeah. Or Aaron Rodgers. But he still clearly would ha- have had a career and a job yes. for a long time. And when you see all these guys starting on Sunday, he could start in the yes. NFL, yeah. okay? But his, like, you know, like, he, he made himself, um, for better or worse, this is what is undeniable. He makes himself a level of distraction. When you have 53 guys in a locker room, and if I bring you on as a backup, you know as well as I do, yeah. you know, that everybody from CNN to World News to you name it. I mean, there's going to be 500 people in that locker room all talking to the backup quarterback. Like, you know that's, that's the truth, right? Like, that's a thing. And yeah. it becomes a topic with you every week is about him being on the team and what he's doing during the anthem. And, like, it is. But that's a choice he made, right, in order to do that. But at least you could say, like, hey, that's noble, right? Like, I mean, this guy, he, he was – he gave up his career. You could say he's goofy or, you know, maybe, you know, and there's people out there that'd be like, that, well, that's stupid. You shouldn't have, you know, right? Yeah. It's not worth it. But, look, he did. He should, he should be making millions of dollars, right, play. And he chose, he made, he made, he made that choice. Um, but it's not like this. There ain't nothing noble about anything no. that this guy's doing. It's just straight Self-sabotage. It's, it's, and, right, it's, and right now, it's people, confusing at this point. And right now, media and people, we still talk about it. Like, dude, if he's like two years from now or a year from now, like if he's like nobody's gonna care at all. It's not even gonna be worth talking about. But is there anybody that you can remember that just like self-sabotage or so? Yes, completely. Uh, that you could absolutely argue is the best. The best. The you best. could argue that guy is the best. He is the probably yeah. I mean top, he's he's top the two, oh, no no two. no yeah. he's he's the best receiver in the league when okay. he, when he plays. All right. I mean his numbers his numbers the last like seven eight years have been like on par with what Jerry Rice was for like a seven year stretch. It's been okay. insane. Okay, we'll so see. maybe not like LeBron, but maybe like <laughs> yeah, no no no. But I'm saying like let's go a little bit further down, right? Like uh, let's like go. Kawhi to, just walked away. Or Anthony Davis. Yeah, Anthony Davis just went high. If Anthony Davis was like yeah. F the NBA. Yeah. F the NBA, I can't believe they're treating me like this. And he just like and then he just like knew he's not I'm not playing in the NBA anymore. <laughs> like, Wait, what? Like it's the craziest thing. This guy's it's, unbelievable. It's top five player in the league. Like Antonio Brown being like like the NFL making money off of my butt. You also make money from them. Like right. millions of dollars from them too. Let's see how much money you can like, make not like, playing in the NFL, like, right? Dude, you exactly. had between two teams this year. Thirty million dollars in guaranteed money that you just crapped away that you were getting from teams no, in be, that league. There will be a day where he looks back and he'll be like, "Dude, that thirty for thirty is gonna be crazy." I'm sure. Sho- His show- thirty for thirty. I'm showing. Sho- I'm sho- wild 30 for 30 in about ten be- to fifteen years. I'm showing up to training camp in a friggin' hot air balloon, <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm, I mean, he's gonna hate it in a couple years." You know what I mean? He's gonna. Re- he will regret it eventually. That's I don't know, man. He may just be one of these dudes. He's just too proud. Maybe so. His pride is just. Maybe it's, so. It's too big. I mean, he's never no, gonna admit it. No, I don't think so. Because he went to Central Michigan. And he grinded his way to get to where he was. He so did. But a, he did. But, he, uh, but but there. But but there is also the some people cannot handle massive amounts of fame that they have never had before. You know what I'm saying? It sometimes it's a little bit easier. If you if you already have gotten all of the attention, yeah. if you're not getting all the attention for the first time, and uh, it's almost like a child star, seriously. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean they're big right tons where it's of like nobody stars. cared about me, and then, boom, everybody cares about me. I'm I mean, on the cover of Madden. I'm on yeah. this right. He I'm was on a Drake just, video. Yeah, yeah. like there, and, I mean there are tons of child stars who have history and it's all the substance same, abuse and it's also and up. it's also all the same stuff, right? The same way they shave their heads or dye their hair or whatever they do. You know, we've seen him. And I, I, I told you when we saw him at the All Star game, he comes in and he had a goatee dyed blonde and a huge fur coat on. Yeah, the NBA All Star game. I'm like, what the hell is going on with this guy? I told you guys that. I'm like, what happened to him? This is wild. Now, I mean, 
Jeez Louise. Yeah. F the NFL. <laughs> I mean, that's a way to get right, it. Dude. That's a way to get a job. Yeah. Because <laughs> he never wants to play again. Really. Never wants to play again. Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker are going to join us on the other side. Chris Farnett, show. WWE returns to Memphis for the first time in 2020 with Friday Night SmackDown. Friday night, January 3rd at FedEx Forum. You'll see Roman Reigns. You must have not got the memo. Braun Strowman. Somebody is going to get these hands. Sasha Banks. SmackDown Women's Champion Bailey. The Fiend. Yeah, baby, wow. Ray Wyatt and more. Tickets available this Friday at high noon at the box office and Ticketmaster. It's your boy, Fat Joe, here. World-famous rapper and world-famous direct auto insurance spokesman. Listen, I know what it's like to have money issues, but that didn't matter to direct auto. They'll work with you and get you the car insurance you need. You don't have to be rolling in the dough to get it going again. Go to directauto.com. Get direct and get going. Save up to 25%. Direct Auto Insurance, Nashville, Tennessee. Rates apply. Discounts subject to limitations, terms, and conditions. How you buy impacts cost. Taco Bell party packs are now available for delivery. Nothing can stop us now. What does everyone want tonight? Tacos, tacos. Now what's going to start this party off right? Tacos, tacos. You can call us crazy. That's okay. We'll get party packs delivered any day. Bring the party to your crew with Taco Bell Party Packs. Get free delivery on your first Taco Bell order over $12, only with Grubhub. Available for participating locations through Grubhub. Prices and items may vary. Tax extra. Delivery service and small order fees will apply. When late night hunger strikes, get to Taco Bell. Your favorite melty, crunchy, grilled, spicy flavors like nachos bel grande, quesadillas, crunch wraps, burritos, and more are all available when the mood strikes in the late night. It's the most delicious decision you'll make tonight. Fourth meal at Taco Bell. The best way to end the night. Sometimes you just got to live months. Hours of participation may vary by location. Grizz Nation. Download the all-new, all-access, all-in-one Grizzlies mobile app. Get three new experiences with one app, including a fresh Grizzlies look and feel, along with new access to FedEx Forum events and Grind City Media news and notes on all things Grizzlies, football, and more. From podcasts to purchasing tickets, playing Papa Shot, and more, the new Grizzlies app has it all. So don't delay. Upgrade your experience and download the new Grizzlies app today. Available now at the App Store and Google Play. The voice. The hits. The tour. The wait is over. Celine Dion. Courage. World Tour. February 9th, FedEx Forum, the first North American tour in over a decade. Reserve seats on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Celine Dion. Produced by Concerts West. Get tickets now. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on WineCityMedia.com. Brought to you by Direct Auto Insurance. Live from the American Home Shield Studio inside FedEx Forum. Be sure with the shield and go to AHS.com today for your free no-obligation home warranty quote. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. All right, we're back. Chris Farnan Show. Shows us brought to you by Direct Auto Insurance. If you want to save a ton of money on your auto insurance, well, give it direct. You can get a free quote today at directgeneral.com, directgeneral.com, or you can call them 1-877-GO-DIRECT, 1-877-GO-DIRECT to direct auto insurance. Hey, look who it is, Rob Fisher and Lane Whitaker. They are the odds couple. You can watch it and listen to it through all the Grind City Media channels. And I have in front of me... What uh, Rob Fisher will remind you every time he hands it to you, the best rankings in best. America, the Fish Scales, which has Ohio State as the number one team in the country right yes. now. Yes. You do not agree with the playoff committee. They had Ohio State one. Yeah, yeah. they did? Yeah. Oh, and then they have, uh, you have LSU, Baylor, Penn State. Yeah. Boy, if you want to talk about <laughs> uh, an eruption on the Talking Head shows. 
Yeah. The fish scales, if that <laughs> were announced instead of, I mean, it was already pandemonium with Clemson uh, not in the four, and you don't even have Alabama in the four. You have Clemson and Alabama who play for the That's national right. title every year yes. at five and six. Yes. Who are both undefeated. Correct. <laughs> As are the top four teams Ohio State, LSU, Baylor, Penn State. Baylor, the most underrated team in America right now. Oh, is that right? Based on what they've accomplished so far this season. And that's what the fish scales, the beauty of the fish scales, which make the fish scales the greatest ranking system in America. Hey, oh, you don't take into consideration um, <laughs> margin of victory or anything. No, right? it's right. about who you beat, man. It's yeah. about wins and, and who ma- you beat. And it doesn't matter. There is no difference between beating, say, Alabama 56 to nothing and beating Mississippi State 21 to 20. Well, there would be a difference because Alabama being a good team, that would count a little bit more than beating Mississippi State. Okay, let's say two good teams. If you played Alabama and Clemson, who are side by side right. here, there would be no difference between beating Clemson 21 20 and Alabama 56 to nothing. No. That's ridiculous. You know that. No, that's not ridiculous. Of course it's, it's about ridiculous. wins. It's about wins. It's how about is, who you beat. How is Memphis ranked ahead of Georgia? Memphis is ahead of Georgia because Memphis actually has more big wins than Georgia. They've beaten two ranked opponents, Navy and SMU, and they've beaten Tulane. Georgia's beaten Notre Dame, who's ranked, and they also beat Florida. And Florida's not ranked because Florida's ineligible for the fish skills, Lang, as you know, oh. because they've only played, they will only play 10 FBS games this year, which mm. makes you ineligible. Play somebody. You, Play FBS opponents. No, I, I'm sticking with this. You know that margin of victory does matter. Why? What do you mean, why? I mean, margin of victory is probably the reason why Ohio State <laughs> yeah. is number one of course it in is. the playoff rankings. They have, but they're number they one beat, in the they, fish scales because they've, they've accomplished teams, more. But they've murdered everyone. Well, so has Alabama, but Alabama hasn't played anybody. Well, I'm just, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Ohio State has played two ranked teams. Yes. And has beaten them by a combined score of, like, 85 to 7. And they're number one. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying that is why they're number one in the college football playoff. You can't even do it seriously. You, you can't even do it seriously. This is based on achievement, what you've accomplished, who you've beaten. Yeah, That's I'm, what matters. I, look, Fish, I, I'm, I'm with you on a lot of this until I get to the whole uh, Appalachian State 14th when they just got their ass kicked by Georgia Southern. Yeah, they dropped from 7 down to 14. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think they're the 14th best team in the no, country? No, I don't think they're the 14th best team in the country, but they've accomplished the 14th best what? accomplishment Fish, this Fish, season. what you got to do, what you got to do. This is who we Fish, what you got to do. I want you to show Mike Norvell his Memphis Tigers no. are the best one-loss team in America. They are the number one team on the non-Power 5 scales. They are playing in the non-Power 5 championship against Cincinnati as of right be, now. They're be, ranked eighth in the country. Eighth in the I, country, the I, Memphis Tigers. I, I, I would be embarrassed to show him a ranking that has Clemson and Alabama at five and six. Fish, what, 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 uh, fish. All you got to do is just do what the, is just do what the playoff committee says when they release. It'll all play. It'll out. It'll all work. It's it, It'll that's exactly all work right. Like this out. week, LSU Everybody, or Bama will drop out. Yeah, and Baylor then, or Penn State or Minnesota Penn, will drop and, out. And Baylor, Penn if they State, lose to no, TCU, they'll drop out. I mean, it'll work itself. Penn Penn State Boise State, State was the number State one team in the country weeks. six weeks ago. Why got, do uh, Why do some of the schools have strength of schedule and some don't? Because that's when it comes down to the tiebreaker. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Like between Clemson and Alabama, it came down to strength of schedule, and that's why Clemson's ranked ahead of Alabama. Huh. Oh, that's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, because there's no. they both we're have arguing, two big wins, uh, one on the road, one at home, and then it came down to strength of schedule, and Clemson's is better than Alabama. Okay. Mm. At least at this point. Again, it'll work itself out. Yeah. And I guess the Baylor one will work itself out. Too. <laughs> Baylor will work now itself out. The, it'll work. It'll work itself yeah. out. Yeah, that's a, when you have to always tell us it will work itself out. That means the current rankings are crap. <laughs> it, don't look at it now. Look right. at it at the end. It's about the end of the right. year. It's, Absolutely. But right. if the season ended today, this is what it would look like. No. But the season doesn't end don't today. Don't look at it now. Thank but, God. But here it is. Here it is right now. If you need to look at it now. That's right. But don't look at it now. No. <laughs> But if you want to look at it, look at it. Then why did right. you hand it to us? Because <laughs> yeah. look, it's about discussion. Hey, That's what rankings are hey, all about, hey, discussion. Do, do me a favor. Hand this to me when it matters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave this one for Coach. Oh, okay. Right. You're going to leave that Just right there? it on the desk. Right. I will, I will. And when he says, wait a second, it says we're only 7-1. and one. That's because FCS wins don't matter. Oh they don't count. God. So Listen you're only 7-1. and one. He didn't schedule it. Don't blame him. But, yeah, well, I'm, not, I'm, not letting, I'm not saying a negative word. All right, we got to keep him here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's eighth in 
the country. I know. I know. What do you What do you want? What do you want? What do you man? want? You're, Mike? you're eight. You're eight. And okay. you're playing in yep. the non-power five championship. All right. Let's play fill in the blank. Mm. By the way, how devastated are you with the success of it's the Verno time. fact last night? Uh, you know I'm using it pregame tomorrow. You better for call the fish it, nugget. You better call it the Verno no fact. Chance. No chance. You Stolen directly from the you. The Verno fact. It's time. And people have petitioned me to change the name, and I have said no. No, it's That's the Verno it fact. It's the Verno fact. Answer. Pete's got his you can take the perspective and Pat perspective. Petey's, Petey's Nito and stat. Petey, and we have a, and no. Pete has perspective. Verno and, veracity. No. And Brevin has Knight's knowledge, and you have the fish nugget, and I have the Verno fact. fact. <laughs> That's what I want. I like awkward. All right. All right. <laughs> Your favorite pick of the week is fill in the blank, sucker. Mm. Ohio State minus 27 in the first half versus Maryland. Okay. Or or here here, here is the here's also one of my favorites. Why I kind of kind of I don't want to go back to the, I don't want to go back to Purdue because they killed me last. They would they screwed me last time. Dude, Northwestern has not scored a touchdown in 37 straight drives. Mm. All right. Yeah. 37. I like Purdue plus the two against Northwestern this week. But I also like – I've loved Wisconsin over Iowa all week. I don't think Iowa will score a point against Wisconsin. Okay. I go Baylor minus two and a half over TCU. I like Baylor, by the way, number three in the fish scales. Number three week. in the fish scales. And TCU's <laughs> out of quarterbacks. They TCU's have, not really yeah, they, 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 they have five two, quarterbacks, and they're down to the last they, well, they, one. They had two, like, transferred this week. Two of them transferred this week, and they only have one kid left, and he's been hurt. So. And he's a freshman. Yeah. Yeah, so true I'm, freshman. I'll, 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 Baylor, I, I, I like the Baylor the Baylor pick, leads yeah. whatever yeah. it is in sacks. Yeah, here, I like Baylor. Here is the oldest trick in the book for mine, which is <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> number one. <laughs> yeah, Notre Dame. That's easy, right? Um, the uh, uh, Just picking Alabama is the easy thing, but yeah. beyond that. There is not one person that likes them this week. No. So they will boat race them. Yes. That's the way this works. It's the way yeah. it works. It's the way it works. Nobody. I'm with you. Likes I, Bama. I Nobody. Got, no. Who's picking Bama? I got done thinking about this game last week and just decided I'm going Bama. Nobody's I mean, picking. It's and, stupid and, if you don't. And LSU has been talking trash. No, all but nobody week is picking too. Alabama. Which is nobody. stupid. That's dumb. Well, and the line ain't moving. Nope. Why is it still six and a half? And everybody is betting LSU. Yes. Like, what did you say the tickets were? It's three to one ticket count, LSU. <sighs> Alabama's the, the other, And the line hasn't moved? The yep. other one is. That's all you need to know. The other one, and the line's not moving really either. It stayed six and a half, seven all week. The ticket count is seven to one on Penn State, and that line is just sticking right <laughs> oh, there. Oh, and that's got to be the biggest game ever at Minnesota. Yes, sure. that Seriously. line is just staying right there. It's the there. biggest game they've ever had. Yes, and Penn State just got in that playoff rankings in the top five, so it makes it even bigger. I, yeah, it's PJ Flex no, just PJ, got that contract extension. Bro, well, PJ and, and Flex I, pregame speech. He is one guy that I would throw up uh, against. <laughs> Franklin in the speech category. <laughs> and the, Franklin is a master. I think it was, was I heard uh, from his speech. I heard yeah. I heard an interview with Bill Conley from ESPN and he you know his S and P thing has been like like really good against the spread on his projections. He has it as a two point game. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Look All at right. the gophers. Go yeah, gophers. All right, here's the hardest one. Row the boat, man. I think this is the hardest uh fill in the blank I have today. Ever? No, not ever. Okay. okay that would be a very high bar. <laughs> <laughs> Blank will win the Heisman. Fill in the blank, sucker. Uh, um, I'll go Justin Fields. See, I would, but they've got two candidates. They should have three because J.K. Dobbins should be in there too. That's my worry with Ohio State with with Fields is that J- Chase Young's going to get some too. I think C.D. Lamb should get a lot more love than he will. Yeah. I think they're going to start pumping this Chase Young if he like if yeah. he has a huge Michigan game or something. Because it's a one Penn of those State, years. The Penn State game. Yeah, it's one of those years where it feels like it's up for grabs. And so, much like the Woodson year, yeah. it feels like, oh, this would Maybe be the, the year. Maybe the first defensive it's, player to win it And then you get forever. people out there saying, look, it's f- supposed to be for the best player. And watch him. He's the best player. And it's like, it's just because you can't find somebody offensively that you are in love I, with. I, it's hard not to, like, field stats. We talked about it the other day. 
On the season, 1,700 passing yards, 24 touchdowns, one interception. Yeah. Tua did that last year, though. That's where I was. That's and where didn't I'm, win it. That's where I'm going to go. I'm just going to say the best player in college football is Tua. I'll say Tua wins. And he's like 3-1 to one right now. Well, especially if he has the friggin' – if he has if, like if the bum Tua, ankle if bum and he lights ankle it up. And well, throws for like 330 and four touchdowns in this game. Yeah. Like, and this he could be his Heisman game. Or what yeah. if Burrow does it this week? I mean, yeah, Burrow, for sure. If Burrow goes on the road in Bama and does it, yeah. absolutely. Oh, I heard uh, – was it John Murray from the Westgate – Said they've they Burrow's odds are they've lowered his odds so much now because they've got like a couple of bets out there when he was two hundred to one they've got one person had like two hundred on it another guy has like a hundred and fifty on it so they've got like some dollars big money. yeah to win and he was two hundred to one before the season that's not a lot of money Roser I'm just saying that's why they look, it, <laughs> I'm just telling you that's these what guys John, take bets for like a million I know I'm just saying but two hundred dollars they don't give a shit I'm not I'm not the dro- I'm just telling you that's what the guy with the West Gate said that's why they lowered his odds so much one guy's got two hundred because they got two hundred dollars on the line okay I mean it's not to like, win that's like how he said they're catching up to us on our first half bets yeah the Vegas was Vegas noticing. is catching up Vegas is noticing yeah they really are um all right <laughs> they have. I I mentioned uh, to these guys the other day I am one of those where if I like get on YouTube, I'm on YouTube for like three hours. Right. Like it's just impossible, right? I found one the other day where it was the, this. This was the worst one in a while. It was a it, Glamour magazine of all things had a thing where they you know how people like do covers of people's songs. Mm-hmm. So Glamour takes the biggest stars, like so like Pink or uh, Kelly Clarkson or the Chainsmokers, whoever, right? And they have them watch. YouTube covers of their songs and then they like film their reaction and then they send it to the people that actually did the covers and they get their reactions. It's actually that's kind of cool. quite entertaining. Yes. Like, yeah. I loved it. I watched all of them, right? <laughs> Shout out Glamour. All right. Your favorite YouTube wormhole oh. is fill in the blank, sucker. Oh jeez. Street fights. <laughs> <laughs> Street that's fights. That's a good answer. Street fights, yeah. That is a very I, I, difficult one I, to get out of. I fell down one a couple of weeks ago uh, <laughs> leading up to the, the Masvidal Diaz fight because Masvidal came up with Kimbo Slice. They were street fighters in Miami doing backyard brawls. <laughs> and I watched some of Masvidal's like, street fights from like years and years ago. Nice. Yeah. I would not be surprised if I was watching like one of those street fight videos. You know, there's always like people in the crowd just watching. If Rosa was one of those dudes in the crowd just watching. I love watching uh, monkeys riding dogs. <laughs> it's not a wormhole. <laughs> it can be. Really? Are there's there, that there many are videos of, that it? of it? <laughs> you could watch it for an extended amount of time? Yeah, I think they're the two funniest things on earth are monkeys riding dogs and naked mascots. <laughs> or like the, clutch, the other one for me would be an, prob- animals. Animals like eating, like, cha- like lions chasing down gazelles and stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right, last one for me. Put an over-under <laughs> number on it. Antonio Brown plays blank amount of NFL games in the rest of his career. Fill in the one. blank, sucker. Put an over under on Minus it. Minus yeah. two. I'd say the over under is zero. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I would. Or say one? No. I, I, no. We'll go. I'd go way over. I'll say fifteen and a half. Whoa! Whoa. Right, I'll take the under. <laughs> what's the What's the under? Like minus ten thousand or something? He'll play. He'll play another season in the NFL. This will all go away. And once well, he's, he's forgotten be, about it, he nobody says, cares about him anymore. On. That's when he'll come back well, because he's gonna, no one will care how he thinks anymore. He's going to be suspended for a season, and then he'll have to be able to come back. Yeah. I mean, he's still under. Josh Gordon still gets gigs. <laughs> right. That's true. How old? Anthony Brown. Josh Gordon I mean, just smoked some weed, though. 28, 29. Mm-hmm. How old is he? He's uh, at probably, 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close yeah. to. All right. All he'll right. Be back. Roser, hit yours. Uh, all right. Here we go. Uh, Atlanta plus 13 at New Orleans, Cincinnati plus 10 against Baltimore, Miami plus 10 against Indianapolis. Double digit dog that could win outright is uh, fill in the blank, sucker. Name him again. Atlanta. I'll go Atlanta. Atlanta plus 13, Cincinnati plus 10, and Miami plus 10. I'll go Miami. Um, Cincinnati's playing the the Ravens. Ravens. Is is Brissett playing? He's banged up if he is. Yeah, I'll go Miami just because they've looked like they have a pulse they, the, the last, last couple of the weeks. The last three weeks, they've looked like a real team at yeah, least. they've had a pulse. And I think, you know, Indianapolis, every game they've played this year has been decided by a touchdown or less. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go Miami just to be in the game and give them a shot. I would say probably Cincinnati because we have no idea if Ryan Finley is any good. It's a division game. 
And who gives a crap about playing against the Bengals after you just beat the Patriots on Sunday night football? And, right? and, like, I mean, and, and A.J. Green might be back. I someday. mean, it's just one of those games where it's like, yeah. okay, this makes absolutely no sense. It's one of We're those all, games. Yeah. We're after, all on the Ravens now. We love the Ravens. Yeah, and yeah. afterwards we go, this is why the NFL's stupid. <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying is our NFL round robin, we're going to have Cincinnati in it I this mean, week. We might, <laughs> we might have Cincinnati in it. Well, I think every home team covered last week, so maybe it's a home team thing now. Yeah, uh, Bill Barnwell did this, did this piece on uh, ESPN.com, so I'll ask you guys. The best quarterback to never make a Super Bowl is... Fill in the blank, sucker. Wow. To never make it? Yeah, never make a Super Bowl. I mean, I saw the. I only saw the cover of the article, and it had Rivers on it. Yeah, he had, I, he had Rivers number one. Well, well Dan good, Marino never a, played in one, right? Played in one. Oh, yeah, he, played he played in, in one? Never won yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, never won one. Oh. Played uh, in one. I mean, I think probably Phillip Rivers. Rivers is a really – that's a great answer. I think Phillip Rivers, the best quarterback to never play the in the Best Super fantasy Bowl. football quarterback maybe ever. Yeah. I'll uh, say his career is only one year. I'll say Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> he might be the best freaking quarterback I've ever seen in my life. Well, and he's also got he's, he's also he's also he's also got two others in there that are very 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 good. Warren Moon, yeah, and Tony Romo, yeah, he yeah. does. Dan Fouts also. I'd I'd still take Rivers. I think over I think there. so too. Philip okay. Rivers, my guy. I love Philip Rivers. Uh, so one of these jobs is open. The other one is going to be open, prop more more than likely. Better job, USC, Florida State. Fill in the blank, sucker. Florida State. I think Florida State. Yeah. Um, nope. Right now, it just feels like the Pac-12 is. Although it's not like that's the ACC what it is. The Pac-12 is either. wide. The Pac-12 is wide open in the ACC. You do have to deal with Clemson. Less traffic. <laughs> yeah, but 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 <laughs> Pete AC. Carroll. Pete Carroll built a monster there. And that's for it. that period of time. But you're talking, you're going back to John Robinson before they. You yeah, know, I'm, talking, I'm talking win big, yeah. big, big for and, an extended and, amount of time. That's two, a long ass time ago. Yeah. Man. And the previous two coaches won national championships at Florida State. Right. No. You yeah. know that. So I, I think that program is better. Plus, I mean, heck, the way the Pac-12 is right now, you might have to go undefeated, and it still might not guarantee you a spot in the college football playoff. You go undefeated at a Florida State, you're in. I mean, yep. it's, yeah. you're handed a you. spot. I agree with you. All right. This last question. This is our Taco Bell. Oh. Ring my bell. Question of the week. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Did we just hear a taco? Do you bell? know yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. Do you know they're oh, going yeah. to be bringing us food, and the food is going to be brought? Do you know they have a mascot? A mascot, yeah. Mister Saucy. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, and he's one of those sauce packets. <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh, Which one? It's going to be uh, yeah. fire. I think. I think it's fire. fire. Yeah. I think he's fire. It better yeah. not be mild. Yeah. No, no, no. We yeah. need f- only oh, Mr. fire. Mister Saucy or hot, because okay. those it. are the kinds of takes we bring wait. on this show. It's going to be. So delivered. this is our Taco Bell ring my bell question. Of the In week. fact, we told them, they were like, "Can they bring us food?" We said, "Only if it is delivered by Mister <laughs> Saucy." Yes. <laughs> that was our request. Actually, I sent the email and I said, "We demand." <laughs> that Mr. Mr. Saucy, Saucy brings this. Yes. I like it. On this day in 2003, the Will Ferrell movie, The Elf, was released. I believe it's just called Elf. Elf. <laughs> right. Whatever. The Elf. The Elf. Elf. Your favorite Will Ferrell movie is... Fill in the blank, oh. sucker. Step Brothers. Easy. Really? Uh, yeah. Mm. A lot of options here. Old school. This is tough, man. I really like Anchorman, the, ori- the first one. Sure. You can make an argument for all of them. And I love Talladega Nights, too. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's a bunch Talladega of them. Talladega Nights is the one I probably watch the most on TV. I think I old feel like it's on more often yeah. than the others. Step Brothers is on all the time. Step Brothers is on all the time? Yeah. What's it on? It's on Paramount. Paramount, yeah. Comedy it's Central. Oh, they got to edit on a so much of that. Yeah. That I, movie is amazing. I go old school. I'm with Lang. I go Step Brothers. I also, think. shout out to uh, Semi Pro, Jack. Yeah, yeah. Semi-Pro is good. Underrated all of them. When, underrated one there. I Blades ne- of Glory also a great one. That's the one I never watched. <laughs> Dude, it's the one with Blades the, of Glory. The, the, Napoleon, Dino, the Napoleon Dynamite guy. Yeah, yeah. that one's awesome. Yeah. What happened to him? Has he done anything since? No. It's really a career no. ender when you're Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. You know it's what I'm like, saying? Like you're, just, you're just him forever. You're him, yeah. I don't even know the guy's name. Yeah. It's like it's He's like Napoleon Dynamite. It's right. like being Stifler in the American Pie. Movie. Kramer. Yeah. He's been in some other movies, but like he's always going to be Stifler. Had career, Kramer yeah. had a different right. career. Did not go very but, well. But yeah. no, he, that guy is Napoleon Dynamite forever. Yes. John, right? yeah. John Heater. 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 I guess it's better than being Pedro. Pedro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pedro. Pedro. Pedro forever. Yeah. But that was your Taco Bell. Ring my bell. Question of the week. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saucy. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that's going to do it for us here. Mike Norvell is the head coach of the Memphis Tigers. Number eight in the fish scales this week. I saw The best one-loss ranked team in the country. I I don't know how I'm going to be able to deal with him on the air after what happened the other night. Did you guys see this? What? Oh, my God. They announced him at the basketball game? Oh, yeah. Oh, for God's sakes. Do you want us to stick around and applaud? I mean, I think think you're going to need to. I don't don't know if he has. I wonder if he's gone anywhere and hasn't gotten a standing ovation in the last four days. He's used to it now. You know what I mean? He he might be wearing a crown when he comes in. (laughs) Let's hope so. (laughs) Uh, I I just hope they're working on a big raise for him. (laughs) <laughs> we're we're gonna we're gonna start paying them off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right we'll here. Do it. Trust me, this whole interview is just gonna be me bribing him. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, we got a billionaire owner. Mike Norvell is the head coach of the Tigers. He's gonna join us on the other side. Chris Farnan. Show. Just keep Global pop sensation Ariana Grande live in concert. The Sweetener World Tour 2019. FedEx Forum Saturday, December seventh. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. The number one selling album, Sweetener, is available everywhere. There's more at ArianaGrande.com. Loving, I'm living, so we turn it up. Grizz Nation. Download the all-new, all-access, all-in-one Grizzlies mobile app. Get three new experiences with one app, including a fresh Grizzlies look and feel, along with new access to FedEx Forum events and Grind City Media news and notes, on all things Grizzlies, football, and more. From podcasts to purchasing tickets, playing Papa Shot, and more, the new Grizzlies app has it all. So don't delay. Upgrade your experience and download the new Grizzlies app today. Available now at the App Store and Google Play. hey it's Johnny Manziel here, pro football player and direct auto insurance spokesperson. I know what it's like to not know where your next paycheck is coming from. It's tough. Like second string in Memphis tough. Getting insured by Direct Auto is easy. Just grab your phone and get a quote from Direct Auto. Tell them Johnny sent you. Get direct and get going. Save up to 25%. Direct Auto Insurance, Nashville, Tennessee. Rates apply. Discounts subject to limitations, terms, and conditions. How you buy impacts cost. What's on the menu at your home tonight? Farmer's Market Dinner. You got carried away and walked out with something called Squash Blossoms. Farmer's Market Dinner. What do you make with squash blossoms? Hmm, Better figure it out, because they cost $19. Farmer's Market Dinner. That dinner will always be there, but Taco Bell's $5 double chalupa box is only here for a limited time. A double chalupa, crunchy taco, cinnamon twist, and a medium drink, all for just $5. Only at Taco Bell. At limited participating locations for limited time only. Contact store for prices and participation, which vary. Tax When late night hunger strikes, get to Taco Bell. Your favorite melty, crunchy, grilled, spicy flavors like nachos, bel grande, quesadillas, crunch wraps, burritos, and more are all available when the mood strikes in the late night. It's the most delicious decision you'll make tonight. Fourth meal at Taco Bell. The best way to end the night. Sometimes you just got to live months. Hours of participation may vary by location. Grizz Nation, all new 10, 22, and flex packs for the Grizzlies 2019-2020 season are on sale now. Save big on single game prices and guarantee your seats to the best games and promotions for the upcoming year, including the Lakers, Warriors, and more. Choose from half season, weekend, and big game plans, plus enjoy extended payment options all starting at $12 per game. Get your new pack today and call 901-888-HOOP or shop at grizzlies.com. Millions of fans have witnessed the concert experience that launched a -a one-of-a-kind rock holiday tradition. Trans-Siberian Orchestra, live in concert. The all-new Christmas Eve and Other Stories, presented by Hallmark Channel. December 19th, FedEx Forum. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Another Beaver production. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com. Brought to you by Direct Auto Insurance. Live from the American Home Shield Studio inside FedEx Forum. Be sure with the shield and go to AHS.com today for your free no-obligation home warranty quote. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. We don't have to worry about no money. 
All right, we are back, and um, we gave him a standing ovation when he walked in. He is the head coach at the University of Memphis for the football team, Mike Norvell. Good afternoon, Coach. Good to Thanks see you. Thanks for coming down on such a gorgeous day outside. No, it, it worked out well, you know, with the bye week. You know, have a little bit of little bit of time leaving out recruiting tomorrow, so it worked out well to to to, to come in and see you guys. What have you done for the uh, bye week? Oh, uh, we've worked. Uh, yeah. I tell you, that's the thing I'm probably most proud of is you know you finish up Saturday night and man, what a what a day, you know, what a weekend. I mean, it was it was incredible, incredible showcase for our city. Um, you know, a lot of recognition for our football team, our our, uh, our players, just uh, in the entire city of Memphis. And uh, to be able to come off of that, we had practice on Sunday, and you know, our guys' approach, their mindset. You know, it wasn't like we just won the Super Bowl. Right. I mean, everybody was excited. You know, we we did what we came out to accomplish, and we were one to know that day. But you know, it, it's all about continuing to improve. And you know, having a bye week this week, we need it. And you know, we have some guys that are banged up. We need to get guys back healthy. But you know, just the the, the overall focus on improvement. Every single day, um, you know, these guys, that's one of the things I'm most proud of this team and, and just how they – what the work they're putting in every day to try to accomplish that. Did you go back and watch it? Uh, watch the game? Yeah, No, no, no. Did you watch game day? I you know, know you were down on a game day. Did you record it and uh, watch it? Did we, you... we did record it, but did. I actually have not watched it. You haven't? I, I know. I mean, I, I've seen I've seen bits and pieces of it, you know, yep. just online, but I've not went back and watched the show. I, I've seen the – you know, one of my favorite scenes of it was just the uh, that sky cam that they had oh. that went down all Beal. I mean, it was that was remarkable. And and I've I've had multiple people, you know, in the entertainment industry, you know, that are that to sit there and that have been a part of game day for many years that reach out and just said it was one that was one of the top game day experiences in their history oh, that since awesome. they've been associated to it. And that's that's what it that's what's so special because you know everybody had an opportunity to shine on Saturday. Mm-hmm. You know, our football team and I was I was proud. They prepared at a high level. I knew we were going to play well. Well, um, How? but just because the Cause way the, too the much mind, going on, yeah, right? I mean, the, the mindset, the approach, I mean, uh, you know, one thing I took them down on Friday, I took the entire team down to, you know, to the game day set because I wanted them to see the, the importance Obviously, the, the the electricity that you felt throughout the city, you know, the entire week. But you know, that's something most of my guys, I mean, they dream about. Oh, when yeah. you're growing up, I mean, I'm heck. I think game day's you know 32 years old. I mean, I, since since I was since I was growing up, I watch that show religiously every Saturday. And to, to have an opportunity to host it here, uh, that's a dream come true for a lot of our players. And I, you know, I know there's a lot of coaches that kind of push that off and say, hey, it's just about the game. Bull crap. That's not real. <laughs> I mean, you know, our kids know, right? And the city knew. And everywhere you went, that's what the topic of conversation was. So I wanted our guys to just embrace that. Man, embrace your opportunity. Yes, you have to stay focused. We know what it takes to win. We right. know what it takes to be successful. But also, man, enjoy that you're getting the spotlight. This, yeah. uh, there's a lot of schools in the country that never that, that have not and never will probably get the, the, the opportunity that we had last Saturday. And, and our guys capitalized on it. And they prepared well. But, man, I, I mean, just the – the, the the opportunity and just the excitement, what Memphis did as a community, our city re- absolutely showcased itself in, in in the best fashion. Saturday morning, Saturday night, man, I'll, I'll never forget. I'll never forget running through that tunnel and looking up and see 59,000 people sitting in those stands all in blue. I think SMU had 800, 800 tickets. The rest of it was all Tiger Blue. And, man, that was, that was something special and, and something I'm extremely proud of. Devin told me at your post-game press conference, almost. So a little, Got, l- little yeah, lip uh, quiver, uh, uh, little <laughs> lip quiver on hey, the bottom. Hey. I said, they almost broke him? They tried. <laughs> it was, uh, I tell you, man. It's, you really almost got emotional it, talking about it, it. It is emotional. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, there's been a lot. There's been a lot that's been poured into this program. There's been a lot that's been poured into this city. I mean, our players, I man, they work their butts off yep. to, to be able to, to accomplish great things. And it's not easy. I mean, it's, it's a challenge every single day. But to, to go, you know, I, I coached against Memphis seven, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. And you know what? There weren't very many people in the stands. <laughs> And, and that's nothing to do, no, but it, it's was. reality, that's what right? And you sit there and you look at, man, the way that the, the investment that our, that our university uh, that has made into our program, the investment the city's made into, this, into our program, uh, the support, the passion, man, that's, it, it shows the potential. Yeah. I mean, that's when I was sitting there after the game, I just took a minute and I, I mean, I, I tried to take it all in. Because, man, that, we're, we're, there is something special that is, that is, that is happening here. There's something that we're, we're really you know, we're investing in as a football program, players, coaches, everybody involved. But to see that, to see that come community-wide, and, I mean, there was uh, something I'll never forget. And you, were, and, and you spent so much time, as you will tomorrow, like you go into these 
high school kids and you're selling a dream. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, this is what this can be. But it hadn't been that yet. And then you walk in, and it is the realization of everything I have talked about, everything I know is possible. It can happen. It, it can is. happen. Right? There's proof. Absolutely. And that's right? where, you know, we talk, we talk to players that we recruit. You know, I, I tell people all the time, and our program is a program that's built for playmakers. And so we go out and we recruit guys that we think have special, special skill sets that are passionate to be successful in every aspect of their life. And then we try to showcase it. Right. We're going to showcase it academically. We're going to so, showcase it socially. Uh, we're going to challenge them in every area. But then when they step on the field, whether, whether it's an Antonio Gibson who plays, you know, is playing wide receiver, line them up in the backfield, kick, return Turning kickoffs, uh, you know, Tony Pollard's, Kenny Gainwell's. I mean, you know, Daryl Hunter, look, just look at the players that we've had that have come through the program and the way that they've been they've been utilized. I mean, that's what that's what it's all about. I mean, you look at uh, you know, you look at defensive side. I mean, Austin Hall, the year that he's having, man, he's lining up inside backer, outside backer, safety, every aspect of, you know, we're trying to put our guys in a great position to 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 do it between the white lines, but it's great when you start to see that support outside the white lines and you're seeing it really, you know, the potential that we have and the, the potential that we're living up to as a fan base and a community when I had you on earlier this year after I, I believe it was the Navy win um and Antonio Gibson had kind of broken out and I said who is this guy and whatever and you're like I have got to find a way to get him the ball more well I yeah, guess yeah. I guess you have found a way <laughs> I mean he just set the record for all-purpose yards yeah. in a game in this last game I mean Good grief. Yeah, he's somebody that's really come on. You know, he played for us last year and was still kind of figuring it out. And, you know, yeah. first-year player, you know, kind of going through the transition, did some really good things for us. But we also, we also had a lot of weapons. You had Tony. You had, you know, Daryl. I mean, Patrick. Right. All those guys that are that are, uh, that are are contributing. And now Antonio has never – I mean, he's never never faltered. I mean, he's just every day just trying to improve, uh, you know, really perfecting his skill set. And, uh, you know, to see it show up, you know, the – I, I don't even know what his ratio for every time he touches the ball, it seems like he's getting the ball to the end zone. Right. And I mean, it is, it is, he's maximizing the opportunity. And now it's, now we are going in every week, man, how do we get this guy touches? How do we showcase him here, you know, playing to all of his strengths? And I mean, he's, that was one of the great performances in Tiger history. It's one of the best performances you'll ever see. I mean, 386 yards, all purpose, unreal. Insane. So uh, there's so many guys, like, it seems like every week I'm saying, who is that guy and how is he this fast, right? There's always some new guy that is now making a play each week and they're all like blazing fast. And I've got to ask, is, is that a massive priority when you and the staff have gone out recruiting these last couple of years, right? Because you are finding, in many cases, guys that are not five-star recruits and have gotten all the accolades coming out of high school though they when you go back and look at their high school stats they've obviously had yeah. you know like Kenny Gamewell was a great <laughs> high school player right yeah. but he wasn't getting the, the 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 offers from the biggest of the biggest schools um where you're having to compete with them did you guys go and prioritize that or is that something that these guys are really good athletes and then you prioritize making them as fast as you could possibly make them. Yeah, I mean, I think evaluation is the key to success in college football. Evaluation of players, evaluation of coaches, uh, you know, evaluation of your current team. Um, you know, being able to, to go out there and assess what your needs are, what you want to coach, what fits within uh, your system. And and I, I think we've done a really nice job of that. And you, But you, you look at Kenny Gain. Well, Kenny was a 3A uh, state player of the year right. in Mississippi. So it's not like he was an unknown commodity. Right. You know, but we did a great job of building a relationship, painting the picture of how he could could be utilized what he could do and I mean he had I mean he had an SEC school in his home state that yep. that, that offered him a scholarship but he believed in the fit he believed in the place and you uh, had to convince him to come to a school with 10 running backs no, I didn't say I didn't say it was easy, right? But 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 on top of that is he has examples in front of him. Yep. There's so many schools that go out there and tell you hey, they'll tell a kid what they're going to do once this kid get here gets here. Right. Man, I tell kid, man, go turn on film. Yep. Go go watch how we utilize our guys, and then you come back to me and tell me if you could see yourself playing in this system, offense, defense, special teams, and that's what that's what's pretty remarkable. I mean, you look at uh, I mean, uh, you know, Tony Pollard for example. Mm -hmm. Tony Pollard did not return kickoffs in high school. Right, he comes here and he returns seven for seven touchdowns in his career in a, in a three year span. I mean, it's 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 about trying to find the things that guys can do to be successful. Antonio Gibson. I mean, once again, you seeing him line up all over the field in a variety of different places. It is we go and we try to find guys that have a great skill set. We yeah. love speed. Obviously, that's something that is a that's an X factor in every game. But then we also try to find guys that that are versatile in what they can do. 
you know, Kenny Gainwell, he could line up in the slot and play and right. be one of the best slot receivers uh, in the country if, if that's all he did. And But, you know, being able to move those guys around, that's what I, I think truly helps our offense go. These guys will tell you the best one, the best one was the track star. And he ran the route down the, down the sideline. And I said, bro, I have never seen a guy run. Like, he caught the ball probably 15 15- 20 yards from the line of scrimmage. I'm like, I don't think I have ever seen somebody run down the sideline, like just running, and within 15 yards from the line of scrimmage, he had a 10-yard lead on the guy. I'm like, who is that? Yeah. It's uh, it's good to have speed, and you know. I, they you know, told me you went to the track team. Well, and no, convinced that kid to come over. Well, actually, we we had recruited him out of out of high school, and he elected to. You know, he didn't have many. Didn't have didn't have Austin, a lot of offers. Austin, right? Yeah, Calvin Austin. Calvin Austin. And so, uh, you know, Calvin was a young man that actually came and walked onto our program, and uh, you know, he want, he was going to run track, and uh, you know, we provided him opportunity to, to do both, and he's come in, and he's now an all American track athlete, <laughs> but uh, you know, he's really developed into a, to a football player that runs track, and you know, this year about. Probably halfway through this, the, 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 to the season to this point, I mean, you could you saw the confidence starting to emerge. You started to build in practice, just become becoming more of a dominant threat. And we we found ways. We said, man, that two lane game, you know, we knew we we're going to get man coverage. I said, man, we're going to put we're going to put him in a position to go to to go win a one on one. And you know, he showed up big, and he's done a great job with that so far through the season. When did you find out your punter can throw it forty yards in the air? Once again, playmakers making plays, right? So uh, <laughs> that, you know, the thing with specialists, man, he they, chucked it. Oh, he can. He that was probably the worst throw he's had, though. It, I mean. It, in any practice, it was an underthrow. It, it, he, he, you know, but he, that's just because Austin. Is well, he like, was, yeah, he was pissed off about it. I mean, <laughs> right, right after the play. I mean, if he'd have thrown it out there like he had in practice, it probably would have scored. But you know, you go out with specialists; they always get out to practice early. And I'm sitting there watching them, and that Joker's out there just bombing the ball. I mean, 40, 50 <laughs> yards down the field. I said, all right, we can, we, we can work with this. Oh, you didn't know? Oh, I, I knew whenever he came here and started practicing. That's why we put the plays in. But no, yeah. no, that's what I'm saying. You didn't know until you saw him no. out of practice just. Screaming screwing around throwing the ball. No, I mean he it, had never like thrown it in high school. He no, wasn't. I, I didn't. I never saw him throw it in high school. He's just a punter. But, the punter, it, right? but you sit there and you look at that. Uh, perfect. Another example: Preston Brady re- yep. recovered the game, the game winning onside kick. Well, yep. Preston's our holder, right? So you know we've we've had the, the I think the last three onside kicks that we've had, our holder has recovered over the last three years. Right. Well, that's you know what do the what do the specialists do every day? Well, they have somebody's kicking an onside kick, and somebody's got to be there to recover them. So usually the holder's the guy, and so you know we just put the guys in a position to make the play. And when the, when, when and also, he practices that all the every time every day. And so that is that is one of his great skills. Let's put him in a position to, to help our football team. And that that was that was one of the coolest moments for me. Is just you know you see a guy that you know not many people know you know yep. from the outside looking in, but when the moment was there, and we needed to have the play. The guy is prepared, he's, he's ready to go execute, and yeah. then he made the play that helped seal the win. All right, so now with everything that has taken place in the last week and game day and the SMU win and everything, it's almost like one of the most tense moments ever. Now, like we've, it, that just becomes forgotten and it's part of the story. But I have to know, as you are standing there on the sideline, we're all in Memphis, knowing that game day is in the balance and the national TV game is on Saturday, as they go and line up for that kick at Tulsa, what is running through your head? Probably can't say that on the radio. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I mean, it was play that play. Play that play. Are you – I mean, we have – we have you know, so throughout the year, you know, we've utilized our, our must-block team in, in a couple times. And, you know, Scott – Must-block. It's must-block. You know, it's gotcha. last, last play. Uh, you know, we call it 911. I mean, it's <laughs> – hey, you better go. It's, it's rolling. And so, Scotty Dill actually had a, had a field goal block, our, our starting right tackle, a 6-7, huge. Um, so, he had a block in the ULM game at the end of a half when we used it. And my whole thing was, man, let's get surge, let's get push in the middle, and hey, either we're gonna get a big hand up, or hey, maybe it might force him to push it or pull it one way or the other. And it's just finish the play, man. You never know how things are gonna go. I mean, you can go back and any team that's achieved success through a season, right? You're gonna find a game or a moment, and it's like, boy, you got you're lucky that happened, or lucky that bull crap. You prepare and you put yourself in the best position, and guess what? Sometimes it, you know, you know, right. stuff happens, and so if, sometimes things happen for the good, sometimes things happen for the bad. Right? you got to control what you can control. And we could control our effort on that one play. We could control you know, the, 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 everything that goes into preparing for that moment. And then when that ball went to the uh, – when it was pulled left. And so that, are you just so in the moment, or is there a moment where you're like, I can't believe this? 
I can't. Uh, I cannot believe this. I mean, it's you know, you really just you try to you try to stay in the try moment. Try to just stay. I mean, there's everybody has human, you know, just human nature. You're going to have those. If you have seen me on my couch, I mean, my wife's looking at me and I'm like, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. I'm well, like, we were going to have game day. We were going to, I mean, my head is in my hands as the thing is going. I said, well, I can't, I can't the, believe the, it. The, my biggest thing is just was to get the stop, to force the field goal. Because two weeks prior against SMU, the team mm-hmm. we just played, top 15, undefeated, they were in the exact same situation. I know it. That kid, same kid, same oh, moment. I, know. I mean, to kick it, do you win? Well, guess what? That's the game. That's 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 the. I was so every th- play I, matters. I said th- I said this. You guys will recall on that Monday. I said, I don't know. Like I don't know how that is because I am a sports fan, so I don't know how it is duplicated for people that aren't. But like, I cannot fathom not being a sports fan and not having that. Like how that that range of emotions can take place on something that in the end is not the end of the world. But in the moment, I am very depressed. Yep. Like, I am – and when he shanks that thing, oh, my God. I mean, like, there's nothing you can do to duplicate feeling that level of depression and pain to euphoria in 15 seconds. Yeah, it's uh, – I'm like oh. – the, the emotional swings are, are and unbelievable. And you, there's the clip. I mean – the all-time fist pump. Oh, I was, I, I was, I was, I was jacked. Yeah, no. <laughs> adrenaline yeah, just running through your body. You know, but it, like you know, just in that. I mean, you look at that sequence. You know, they call a timeout. You know, there with a couple seconds left. Um, you know, we call the team over. I mean, we, all of our coaches. We're talking. We're getting everybody lined up. This is what we're gonna do. Bang bang. Oh, I'm right after it. I take my headset off because I had no, no, we done all we could do, <laughs> right? I take my headset off, and man, there was I got all the same emotions. It's real. I mean, it's yeah, human true. nature. But then when that thing, when that kick went left, oh, oh, well, that was real too. <laughs> like, it, it was, uh, it was awesome. Did you sleep? Um, I, hell, that's that's, that's, I that's a couple imagine. weeks ago. I can't remember. I can't, I can't imagine. What about after the SMU game? Um, there no. was it was a uh, there was a lot of uh, it was it was I was feeling pretty good. So right? it was uh, yeah. I mean, you, you know, you just it's there's so much. To I, have that, by the way, perfect bye week. No question. After I mean, all and, of that and all that, it would have been hard. To get, I know you say that's a great thing about this team, and they focus and they work hard every day. Oh, it, it would have been, it's it's hard, hard I mean, to yeah. get them back in. I mean, because that is, it's just so much that was going on leading up to that game, and then last weekend. Was I mean, it just was huge. it was a, the, the emotions, everything that went into it. it you could probably couldn't ask for a better uh, for a better time for a buy, um, and then coupled with the the things that with some guys getting banged up and you know needing to try to get them back. I mean, it it, it worked out well, and our kids. You know, for the for the days that we, uh, the three days that we went out and practiced, uh, you'll hear this week they did a remarkable job. So I'm really proud of them. I need to make a public apology. I will do this now to Brady White, and I, look, I I was hard on him for sure. And there was a game earlier in the season where I was like, come on, like I mean, there's a million playmakers out here. He had had a bad game and then had a bad half. Um, and I, like many people, and I, I actually I'm not even gonna throw many people. I got down on him. For sure, and I was brought, it the was it the first half against Navy because even you said something to him. Yeah, in the first half and, of the Navy and, game, and I brought you on after that it was. I brought you on after that Navy game, and you said there was the checked play where he handed off to Gainwell. That was the very first touchdown, and you were explaining to us like, look, you have no idea how much all of this this guy has to do, and he sees this defense and he knows this system, and I have complete belief in him and. You do, and beyond him, you know, like he went from don't just like manage the game, get the ball to the playmaker. Like, bro, he was throwing dimes. Yeah. He's uh, like two weeks in a row, just throwing absolute dimes, and it's one of those where your steadfast faith, right, in this player, that's got to feel great because you know he was getting well, hit. But right, I, I but I also know who he is. Yes, and I, I'm at practice every day. Yeah, I, I mean, I see it, and that doesn't mean, I mean. There are things that happen in the ga- in the game. Guys miss a block. Guys miss a tackle. A throw. Pick you pick the the yep. the. the, the but, but it's all performance based. Yep. And you know Brady has just continued to prepare. He's continued to work on to improve in every in every area. But he needed he needed that response. And he did not. You know we there's no secrets. I mean you had the great check in the first in the first half of the Navy game. Well he also missed missed one of his 
you know, right. one of his blitz checks that well, that was a negative the, play. It took the red zone sack. Yeah, I mean, there was, was oh, there was some the negative. There were some negatives, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, everybody knew it. I mean, yeah. we heard it, right? <laughs> I mean, there were some negatives, but uh, you know, but his response that is who that kid is, man, and it is because he doesn't get high and low. And you know, does does he probably hear the noise? Yeah, I'm sure he does. I mean, it's it's made pretty. It's impossible pretty, yeah. not to. What, it's the what, same thing. It's like when it's, profile gets higher. But it, it's how you respond to those situations. Right. And, you know, he is just every day, man, he comes to work. And there's an unbelievable respect for him on our team. But I also know the talent. I mean, I, I see it. I believe I, I believe in him. I believe in what he could be. And, you know, the great thing is he's been able to showcase that here, um, you know, especially these last couple of weeks when teams, their goal, I mean, last three weeks, their team's goal is to try to take away the run game and force him to beat them. And he's, he's shown up. I he, mean, is he is throwing it farther. He's, he's, he is than he was earlier in the year, right? It might be the, the longest pass might be 15, 20 yards, you know, here and there. I mean, he's chucking it now. Well, I mean, I, I think that that's, those are the, the, the moments and the big plays that are happening. I mean, there's still times. I mean, he's thrown, he had thrown the ball well down the field. And, yep. you know, whether it's a missed opportunity or this, that, and the other, he's throwing – he's getting – I think our offensive line is, is improving. The protection is the, for him to have an opportunity to get through a progression, to get his eyes set, uh, you know, obviously locating the, the yep. ball down the field on time. All those things, everything factors together. Yep. It's easy when you watch one player and you say, what, he sucks at this, or he's not doing this, or he's not – Man, there's a lot of things. When you get 11 guys on the field, it all has to tie together. And he is playing at an unbelievably high level right now. And, and, he, and But there are a lot of people around him playing at a high level, too, that are allowing that to happen. I mean, the throw to, the throw to Antonio Gibson, uh, you know, A.G. ran an, a great route, a little double cut out and up. Right. And, I mean, you know, left the, guy, left the guy about 10 yards behind him, and it was perfectly thrown on time, on rhythm, just like we practice it. Mm-hmm. And, but those guys are – you could see the confidence growing. And that's the thing I'm probably most proud of Brady is that he stayed the course to improve. And now he's playing at a level that, that I've – Always believed he's capable of, and uh, you know, and we're rolling. You know, we were talking about playmakers. That SMU team has some playmakers too. Yeah, Their receivers. Oh, I'm telling how you, how awesome were they? I'm like, good grief! And even the running back, the one that he ran from midfield, you don't see a lot of runs down the middle. No, and you know, it, what I mean that somebody breaks like well, there's that. A, there's a reason why they were undefeated. I mean, it's a, yes. they they. they that's Bouchelle, a, you recruited Bouchelle, yeah, right? When I was at Arizona State, and I mean, he's a, he's a really good football player. Yeah. Um, you know, you look, their their running backs, one of the best in the league. He's he is. They had two backs that were really good, but I mean, those guys were talented. Those receivers, tight end, man. Those, it was a it was an impressive group that we you know going against, and so. Um, but and uh, Dykes yeah. is probably somebody that you've. Stolen from, look to. I mean, he's you know, been we, an offensive we, yeah. guy for a long, long time. Yeah, when I was at Arizona State, he was the head coach at Cal, and yep. so we competed against each other. And um, you know, then obviously, you know, I got a lot of respect for uh, the type of coach he is. And uh, you know, it's. Uh, he's been an offensive guy for a long, long time yeah. too, right? Like he's been that type of guy. How do you get your guys to not look ahead now? Nice. You know what I'm saying? Because now you know. You know what happens to the best. Power f- non uh, you know, non power five team and everybody's already talking about it. That's the p- hard part, right? Is that people start talking about? Oh, look at what is possible if you if you can win out if you can beat Cincinnati and you're the top ranked non power five team. You're playing in the Cotton Bowl and this is this. like how do you quell that? Well, if I remember correctly, before the season, everybody's talking about it too. Right, and so it's not like there right. hasn't been expectations, and now our guys have done some good things to get in this position. It's the message never changes. It's about today. It's yeah. about how we go out there and work. Um, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad that we're we're ranked. I'm glad that people are taking notice of what we're doing. Um, you know, the exposure that some of our players are getting. It's all. It's it, it's all good. Uh, it helps us attract more attention to the program. Recruit. You know, everybody sees it. But at the end of the day, it's about this week. And the only way that we can can prepare uh, to to be successful is, man, we've got to continue to get better. And going on the road against Houston, you know, if there's a rivalry game uh, that is that is you know played up to that, you know, the last you know four or five years, it's this team, it's this opponent. And so uh, your know, guys, they, you know, they know what's at stake, and it doesn't matter. You can get caught up looking, you know, two or three games down the road, or what if, what could. Uh, that's been some of the immaturity that we've had within our program. I think at times, um, you know, you look look back. I said it. I think I said it here this spring when I came on you know you look at the championship game last year um man we we had a lead and we'd been playing well and there wasn't you know the, our opponent did do some great you know, halftime adjustment we got caught looking at the clock we got caught you know and they made a play when they did, oh no what's happening don't worry about the end of it focus on the play the one play in front of you right and that's where i, I tell guys man you know momentum swings affect the teams that allow it to good and bad 
good and bad. Right now, we're playing at a high level. I mean, we're coming off, you know, Three pretty good performances and guys, you know, feeling feeling uh, uh, pretty confident in what we're doing. Well, well, coach, man, you got to buy a week, don't you? Don't you wish you keep playing? It doesn't matter if we continue to improve. We'll come back better after the bye week, right? On the flip side of it, you know, if we don't, I mean, we'll be a disappointed football team. Two things that you know sometimes that can just be coach speak, but the reason it is totally believable is the way your team responded after getting their heart ripped out in the Temple game, right? And Because that's one that can really get you down. So that's a game-to-game thing. The second thing is, and this gets forgotten in the grand scheme, the first drive against SMU, you get stoned. And they put up the first seven on the board. So yep. if, if you're talking about momentum could be a hell of a thing, I mean, look, you can't get better momentum than SMU had by you can't score on us, you stop – we stopped you at the one, and we're putting seven up on the board before you guys ever get the ball in your home arena with 59,000 people. But you just come res- right back just, and score. Just respond. That's play the, the next right? play. Play the next play. Don't worry yeah. about the thing. You learn from every experience. Yeah. All right, we've had a bunch of them. You yeah. learn from them. But then you go play that next snap. Yeah. All right. Ha- By the way, I just now noticed this as I was asking that last question. How- have you noticed – that there is a bobblehead of you right in front of you? I, I, you know, I should have just put it right there. I just... Look at how black that hair is, by yeah, the way. That was, that must, that, that, that's, one, that's a few years uh, ago, apparently, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look at how black that hair is. Yeah. Okay, did you watch the... Uh, uh, here, you, you want me to ask you? As yeah. you, you <laughs> yeah. All right, did you watch the... Uh, did you watch the... Uh, when you watch the game film back of that game, do you watch? Did you watch the broadcast version? I did. I watch. I. I, I you will, did. I'll usually watch the broadcast okay. of every game just to see what shows up on. Okay. That. Did you see that they uh, at one point during the game? Because I mentioned this earlier in the week, they highlighted. Um, there's like a little vignette. It's not very long, but they showed your locker room, and they showed pictures in everybody's locker, and that you had gone to everyone on the team. And you had said, I want you to get a picture of whoever you play for, right? Whatever is your motivation. So when you come to this locker, you are going to see that picture and you are going to remember why you care so deeply and who you are representing and what you, know, what you care about. And it was, it, it was a very nice moment within the broadcast where they're talking about this. And they showed a couple of them. Mm-hmm. And many of them were family. Um, did you steal that from someone? Yep. Was that something that you came up with on your own? Did that, you? We actually, and I say we, you know, Todd Graham and I, when we were at Arizona State, uh, you know, we came into a program that uh, um, it had been through some tough times. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know, six and six kind of mediocre teams, and um, and that was something that we we came up with is we wanted to we wanted to highlight you know the why. Because at the end of the day, I mean, all these kids come from a different place. And when I came to Memphis, it's it's been the uh, it's the first thing I do on, whenever we get a kid on campus is, is you have to know the why. All right, everybody's got a different journey. Everybody's got different experiences, but they're all they're all doing it for someone. They're all they're all trying to do to to live the best version, to get have the best life. And so and there's some motivating factor. And one, when you talk about family. Man, you've got to know. You've got to. You've got to be able to 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 know about your teammates. You have to be able to, to get a sense of of you know what's their purpose. And and uh, you know I, I try to structure everything within our program to have a reason. We we practice in the mornings. Right? We 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 uh, we start every morning in our locker room, and the first place that every player goes to is right there in front of their locker. And so with the way that we structure our day, I know that the first thing they're going to look at, whether they, whether they, they woke up and took a shower, blah, blah, this, that, or whatever, they come to that locker room and they look at that picture. And in twofold, one, they understand who they represent. So every decision they make for the rest of the day, they're representing those people. And then they also, it's a reminder of, of what they're trying to accomplish. Why are they here? And, you know, I, all I ask for them to do every day is just be the best version of themselves. And if we can improve that by 1% every day, then we have a chance to do something special. And it's, and it's not just the, I mean, that's off season, that's in season. It's, it, it, they all count. And so just being able to have that picture and that, that focus, because, you know, I can sit here, you, you can ask any player, you know, what their goals are. Man, they're going to all tell you the same thing. Well, I want to play in the NFL. I want to, hey, I want to be successful in business. I want this. I want to have, you know, be a great family man one day. Well, you know, the only, I think I've told you this. I have one quote that's in my office. It's, are your habits of today on par with your dreams for the future? I mean, I want our players to have the biggest dreams. 
right? But are their habits of today, are they, are they making those people in that picture proud? Are they doing the things necessary that they told them that they would do? And, and it's all about the constant growth. And so, you know, it, your kids get distracted. You know, imagine that, right? Yeah. But, I mean, you're 18 to 22 year old, you're going to be pulled in every direction. Don't lose focus on why you're here, what you say you want to do, and then go, man, let your actions speak it. Whose quote is that? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't even know who's. I just bought it at Success. Yeah. And, and I, heard I, it, I heard it one, I heard it, uh, it was probably about seven or eight years ago, and wow. I, was, I was watching a video, and I heard that quote. And I went back, re- rewound it, and, and I mean, it just, it's a life quote for me. You know, I, it, it's in every aspect. Repeat, that repeat it for me. Are your habits of today on par with your dreams for the future? I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, whatever your dreams are. I mean, everybody's got different, different dreams for what they want to accomplish. I mean, I sit there and I think about that, that, that five-year-old little girl that I have. Right, man, one day, man, I, I, I want us to have an unbelievable relationship. I want, I, I want us to, you know, you know, whether it's, you know, 35 years from now when she decides to get married or whenever that 35. is. <laughs> yeah, but whenever that, whenever that time is, man, I, but you know what? I want that to be special. Yeah. And so are, am I doing the things today to, to, to make that happen, right? And it's right. just, you know, you sit there and you know, every coach, they talk about developing players. I mean, it, are my actions saying that? Mm-hmm. So I don't, that's why I don't give pre, pre-practice motivational speeches. I, don't, I tell our guys, listen, all right, you watch me. You watch me from the minute we step on that practice field to the second we get off of it, right? And if I'm not being the example of what I ask you to do, then you don't have to listen to me at the end of it. You can take your crap and you go inside. And one of the greatest compliments I've ever received, we had a linebacker that played here, uh, I think it was a, a year ago, he, he finished up, and he told me, he goes, Coach, goes, I've been watching for three years. I've been waiting for it. And you never give me a reason. Wow. And it's a greatest compliment. Because, and that's why I, t- I tell our guys, man, go, go live it. You know what you want. Go live it. Go take it. Nobody's going to give it to you. Right? And that's, that's, what, that's where these guys were continuing to work to grow. Are we there yet? No. I mean, we're not. We still got – I mean, we got guys that, you know, there's, there's days that are hard. I'm going out there and practicing to this day, there was some adversity, I promise you. <laughs> and, and this is a day where even you who love it, you wanted to cancel. <laughs> No, not even a little bit. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Oh. You saw this weather, and you're like, <laughs> my hands wanted to cancel. When is, when is, <laughs> when is that indoor facility oh, ready? Oh man, that, it was it was it got cold out there today. This is I ridiculous. No it's freezing outside. It's yeah. raining. Yeah, the wind was awful too. <laughs> Terrible. All right, I think that quote came from Alan Stein, who is a motivational speaker. And this quote was used by a trainer, actually. I just found a story on it. It was awesome. used by a trainer at the Nike at the Kobe Bryant Nike Skills Academy on Steph Curry. He said Steph Curry was not one of like the biggest guys there, not one of the best players there, but the guy said, I could tell there was something in him because he worked harder than everybody else out there, was working harder than everybody else, and he like grabbed hold of Steph and yeah. What and was apparently it said, Alan, Alan Stein. Stein. Alan Stein Jr. So this is a keynote, speech, a keynote speaker, improving leadership, cohesion, team strength. Yeah. Are you a big self-help guy? Motivational stuff guy? And I'll, I mean, you I'll, said you were watching a video. Do you know? Yeah, it was. It was actually. It was some highlight video that somebody <laughs> played to our team. So it was like. Uh, I mean, but it, it stuck. Somebody said that. Yes. Yeah, and so I mean, I'll, I'll watch. I'll, and I'll watch things from time to time if there's things yeah. out there I can pull from. I've, uh, I've you know, I try to read a, a couple books during during my downtime uh, in the off season, and uh, you just always always want to grow. You know, and that's something that's. Uh, I hate to do this. Actually, I don't hate to do this because I mean, I, and I don't want to get on my hands and knees and grovel. But the stories already came out this morning, right? And you have dealt with this for three years now, where it is inevitably, big school needs a coach. Here's the name that gets floated out there: Mike Norvell at Memphis. I'm told that he is a person of interest, and it'll be this school or that school or this school or that school. So at this point, you are a seasoned vet dealing with said question, but. You know, when the fan base is out there, you know, look, the same way. You, you have never been – you have never acted like you have complete tunnel vision and you are unaware that this yeah. is the way college athletics and fans and everything works and that this is going to be the chatter. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it is uh, – I would say it's a compliment that people are talking good about our program and it's, it, they, that we are doing things at a level that, you know, people have taken notice. I mean, but, you know – Heck, after my first year here, there were people that were asking, man, Coach, uh, really the first official visit weekend we ever had in recruiting, one of the recruits asked me, well, Coach, how long do you plan on being here? 
I mean, that's, that's, that's the nature of the business is there always going to be questions. I mean, with all social media, anybody can throw out a, a name of this or that, and then, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spread. You know, I can tell you, uh, just like I tell my players, man, I, I'm, I'm open and honest with them. I, I've got, I, I believe I've got one of the best jobs in the United States of America. Man, this is a place I love to live. This is a program that, you know, just like all the things we talked about, man, we're building, we're yeah. growing. I mean, uh, you know, it's a, it's a special opportunity. Um, you know, can I, I can't handle, I can't control if somebody's saying that, you know, that, you know, putting our name out there or the same thing with our players or, or you know, whatever. But, you know, you take it as a compliment. You stay focused on the job that we're doing. You continue to grow. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm excited about our future. I'm excited about what we do. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's one of those things. Is there anything I can do to make sure you stay no matter what? Like, is it, do I need to give you money, <laughs> praise? Could I just say, could I follow you around? Or maybe, like, I get Devin to do a bunch of chores for you, you know. If it, right? Devin, it's a, Devin, uh, Devin wants you to stay worse than anyone, so Devin, Devin's willing. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a, uh, it, it, uh, this, is an, this is an incredible place. Yeah. And it's, and it's, you know. I think you feel, this is uh, on a personal level, I think you feel differently about Memphis than you did two years ago. There's, I mean, and especially what you I tell people all the time, and you know, obviously, I've had to, I've had to recruit people to Memphis. I know, coaches, families, players. I love this place. I know you do. I mean, I do. I mean, it, with every part of me, this I totally is, believe that. And and it is. I mean, I would defend you no matter what you do, but I absolutely believe that you really genuinely love this job and you love this city well, and there, there's been there's been such there's been such an investment to what we're doing and this and i'm not even talking about the i mean yes the financial aspect some of the things that we're building to what we're trying to do but there's i mean there's been the 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 emotional investment for our fan base i mean for the city i mean you know how people are um you know around the, around the community i mean it's it's exciting and the thing that's unique about memphis is that you know, we have the Grizzlies, or our professional team. Obviously, there's some really cool things with, with the 901 and the soccer yep. team, and a lot, a lot of things that are that are rolling. And but Memphis Tiger Athletics, I mean, they're critical. Yep. They're critical to this community. It matters more here, and it is it is special when you get a chance to to make an impact. And and, to, and if you need an example, go back and watch Saturday. Yeah. And that's what you know. That's not the you know people people get them. I mean, there's. You know, I'll be honest. I mean, and, and, there have been there have been phone calls from from other places that seek interest, and I don't I don't even there's I, you say I don't have any interest in even accepting the phone call because of what I know is here. Right. And you know, people are like, well, you want a, a power five job? You want this? I mean, what does that mean? Right. I, I've got one opportunity to live this life. I, I mean, this I want. I guarantee you, I, mean, I want to be somewhere that it, that it matters, that we can make an impact. Right, that we can sit there and, and I enjoy to live, and you know it's 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 got to be all the the grass is not always greener. You see coaches all the time, all that, the time that they jump to this or they jump to that, and then boy, it, it's not what they thought. Um, is that saying that man that uh, you know, I, I don't know? I mean, it's just there's there's a lot. Yeah, I, that, look, look, man, I've dealt with a million coaches. You never know, and everybody everybody's got like that's your job, and you like you said, you have five year old daughter, you gotta do like. Sometimes there are going to be jobs that are, or, or amounts of money that it's irresponsible, right? But I do believe that you love it here and it would take something. I think, it's just me talking, you don't even have to respond. I think it would take something spectacular for you to ever leave Memphis. I really believe that. I really believe that. I don't think that you would leave for a mediocre. I don't think that you sit there and go, I need to be in the Power Five and I'm really up against it if I'm at Memphis versus these teams. I don't. I've got an incredible situation, yeah. and, and and I think it's continuing to get better. And that's yeah. where you know when you see that, you see the leadership of what we have. I mean, Dr. Rudd, uh, the, the just his passion, the person, the leader that he is, uh, the board of trustees we have, uh, hiring Laird Veach, who I'm just telling you, rock star. Oh, the really? The guy is going to. I mean, what he's the new AD. Do, oh, he, what he is going to do for our program and continuing to push. I, it just, you know, he's, he's, he's somebody that's come in that has a great deal of experience uh, at a variety of different places. But man, you can just tell in how he operates genuine. I mean, to the point, you know, it's, wow. I, I'm excited about all those things that happen. I mean, you know, Oh, I, and I, that's your I, two I, bosses. That's your president, your AD. Oh, let me tell you, and our board of trustees are incredible. Yeah. I mean, that that you know, when you look at the foundation and kind of the the structure of how things are set up, can we continue to build? Can we continue to to progress moving forward? Yes. 
And what, what's happening in our city, yeah. right? Everything, everything in Memphis is growing. And that's where you sit there. I, I got an opportunity as great as the bye week, but I was at the basketball, uh, the Tigers game uh, uh, there, the, the, the season opener. Man, how, how impressive was that? They're huge. Uh, holy. <laughs> to play, I mean, what they played, they played 12 guys in the first half. It looked like an NBA. And team. it was, what's amazing is you see the, 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 the versatility in their, in their skills. And, you know, there's teams want, I don't know what a first half will ever look like, but I'm going to tell you, they're going to wear people out and it, yeah, as that game uh, continues on because it's just their length, their speed, athleticism. Oh, that dang James Wiseman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, throw the oop, baby. Hey, they, oh, they, 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 they got a couple, couple there, too, that I'm thinking, boy, you better get Novell out of that building before he takes him oh. away from Penny. The Dandridge kid <laughs> yeah. and the Stokes no, kid, I, I, yeah, those I, are defensive ends. Yeah, yeah I, thought, I, I thought a couple months, like, Coach, if you need a defensive end or you need a tight <laughs> end mean, or you need a tight end, like, you don't have to go on the recruiting trail. You can just walk over uh, to the arena and grab them. I tell you what, man, it's uh, – but I, I'm so – I'm excited for, yeah. for Coach Hardaway and what, what he's done. And, and once again, it's building. And the brand and the Mem- all of Memphis athletics, it's cool. Like yeah. everybody, right? Everybody's into the football team, into the basketball team. It's I all. Mean, and then, like our women's soccer team is top yep. ten in the country. I know nobody it, yep. that doesn't get the recognition, but you know what? Uh, it, it top matters. Top ten in the country is big. It matters. Deal. Yes. Yeah, I, I did see. I did see one of the uh, one of the uh, signs on uh, on game day. It's like uh, uh, we 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 want Bama in women's in women's soccer. soccer. <laughs> I thought that was pretty you good. You didn't take that as a personal affront? Uh, no. 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 Because you don't want Bama. I didn't say, I didn't say that. <laughs> I don't want to play it. Wait, wait till you watch uh, Bama LSU on Saturday. Oh, you'll get to. This is going to be like the first Saturday that you can kick out, back and watch some games? I'm out recruiting. Uh, I'm actually I'm really? actually going to see games. I'll be, at, I'll be at a high school game Saturday at 2 o'clock. So. Is that right? Oh, yeah. So you will not watch games all day? Got work to do. How about you? you just, hey, you remember that speed you were talking about earlier? Yeah, I'm gonna go watch some. You, oh, really? <laughs> oh, you, yeah. You've got some speed that you we, have we, out we, there. We, that's and that's what's fun, man. Yeah. The, the recruiting, the type of the caliber athletes that we're on, that we're able. Well, to, and you better get a lot of your stuff done because what do we got? Like one or two weeks, I know, with a daughter as I have. You're gonna be there. In fact, you just tell me when, and we'll just all meet. You're gonna be at Frozen too. <laughs> on opening night. That's happening. When is opening night? I guarantee. So, I think, what is it, November 16th or it's something like oh, that. Oh, that's rough. There's just no way you're missing Frozen 2. Yeah. Mike, it's, I mean. Yeah. It, November 22nd. There you go. Hell, I mean, tickets are probably already sold out everywhere. <laughs> well, I, gar- I, 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 I guarantee Maria has a couple of them. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't doubt that. Guaranteed. Yeah. Especially with a five-year-old daughter. No, no doubt. You might as well go and mark that down. What's their schedule look like on the 22nd? That's Thanksgiving, right? Y'all play Thanksgiving weekend? Friday after. We play the Friday after Thanksgiving. That's open. Wait, is it the 22nd or would that be the next week, the 29th? What's Thanksgiving, Roser? Uh, the 20, it's the 20, oh, God, when is Thanksgiving? Would it be, oh, no. What if that's the Friday after? You're, look, I'm not planning. Thanksgiving is the 28th. Thanksgiving the 28th. Oh, I was about to think you got a five-year-old no. daughter. I'm not planning. I'm not pro- just so you know. I'm probably I'll see it for the third time with her. I mean, but I'm not. I, I'm not making the You're in season. <laughs> the in season Frozen debut will not be on my uh, agenda. Does she have an awareness of uh, like what took place on Saturday night? Is she awake? Yeah. Oh, she was through the whole game. Was she awake, man? She was like cartwheels on the field afterwards. At eleven, I mean, we were rolling till like eleven at, at the Liberty Bowl, and she was she was leading the charge, which is she knew. Oh, she and that's what once yes. again what Why makes it special. Right? I mean, yes. you sit there and uh, now she did tell me. So I, now I haven't seen this, but okay. she did tell me. She goes, she goes, Daddy, I was on TV. Oh, really? And she goes on the Tiger Walk. You know, I always see her. She always at the very end of it. And right. I guess uh, I, I guess the ESPN cameras got uh, her hugging Brady White whenever he was coming in. And so she got she had her her time, uh, her time so to shine. She's and a TV I said, star. I said, well, where the hell was my hug? All right. And so she, yeah, yeah, you don't you know, I guess I guess uh, you got to throw some touchdowns to get a hug, man. I was like, dang. <laughs> she hugged Brady White and you walk right on man. by. Huh? Right on by. I always ask you for a movie review. I'm going to be very impressed if you have seen a movie since the, be- since the season began. I, I mean, I have not. Not one uh, movie. No, the one thing that, that Mila makes me do, which, I, you know, you talk about Frozen, too. So, I guess there's a, a, a bomb. Abominable is coming. Abominable. So, abominable. He can't say it. He can't say it I can't it say it either. either. I can't say it. Abominable. Abominable. He did good. 
Yeah, Devin says Obama to bump. <laughs> that, that's that's yeah, that's probably how it abominable. Should. So I've I've watched a trailer for that. Yeah, so many times that I am <laughs> that is actually gonna be on the trailer because she. I mean, that's what she did last night when I got home. She's like, that's what she wants. You to watch, want so. to see? The, she wants you to see the trailer. Well, I've wa- no, abominable. I have watched the trailer. You have many watched. times, much like Frozen Two trailer. I've watched <laughs> yes. many times. So oh yes, um, but uh, no, I, I haven't seen. You any, watched anything on TV? Nothing. What? What? Do I, I mean, what am I going to You really? Oh, I don't. Yeah, we stay late. We, 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 we're rolling pretty good during the season, so there's not a whole lot of time. What time do you get home? Uh, post 10 most of the time. I mean, it, oh, we really? get, yeah, we start. We probably get to the office. Even on five. like, a, okay, what's today? Wednesday. This week. This week. So one of the things I did this week is I, 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 we came in. We did it just like a normal work week, uh, you know, there in the morning. But then uh, I forced the coaches to leave there at, uh, after, after special teams, like 6, 6 6.30 uh, here this week. So I've, we got to spend some time at home, but we just haven't watched a movie. So. And uh, do you watch TV? Uh, football. You will. You yeah. just watch football. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess what was last night? Maction. Maction. Yeah, Max. Yeah, a little bit of Ohio. It was you Ohio Char- Miami. Chargers and Raiders tonight, right? I so, guess that's on. Uh, yeah, but there's, we, there's we, we, he's got to do some uh, some scouting. He got Temple, South Florida. Yeah. Oh, Temple, South Florida is tonight. Yeah, and then tomorrow night is a uh, UCF and Tulsa. Oh, that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. I, I, I it will be because Tulsa. Under the radar. You that's tell, an under. You could tell the radar Tulsa. Game that could get Tulsa was there's look. It's you want to talk about trying to get a team back up. After that game against y'all, you, they went down to Tulane. They didn't have a chance. Yeah, I mean, it was just that was going to be so hard to get that team. It's, you, you look at shattered. Bro, that, there's, there's, there's another one Friday night that I look at like that. When you look at, like, Washington coming off back-to-back losses, Oregon. It's hard. Oregon and Utah. And you got Pac-12 after dark Friday night. In Corvallis. In Corvallis it's at the, Oregon State. One of the, the worst, one of the worst, thing, worst experiences of my co- coaching career. Corvallis? We did Corvallis. We had a... I want to say it was an 8:45 Pacific kickoff, and it was it was we were ranked sixth in the country at Arizona State. It was the first year that the, the BCS came out, and, and all the powers to be decided that would be the smart decision: send Arizona State at 8:45 Pacific to play the game. And it was like 20 degree, one of the coldest games of my uh, that I've ever been a Wait, part of. In the of. morning? No, PM oh, night. That's like, 10:45 Central it's time. It's 11:45 Eastern. That was, I mean, it, nobody was watching the game, right? <laughs> and we take our number six ranking, and we go up, and we end up losing by a score at Corvallis. So it, that's a tough place to play at night. I mean, that. Oof. This is a, Good luck it's, to a it's a 10:30 Eastern start this yeah. time. 10:30 Eastern, 9:30 Central. Wow, better them than better them than us. Yeah, <laughs> and that was that was a you were ranked six in the six. country. Yep. Who's your quarterback? Taylor Kelly. Taylor Kelly, what a blast from the past, yeah. huh? Yeah. How about that, Mike? This has been an awesome season so far, right? No Keep. pressure the rest of the way. Yeah. I mean, you're only what? like just got to win them, right? Hey, yeah. you got to kind of like that they uh, Cincinnati was a spot higher, right? Oh, come on! I would love that if I'm a coach. Sure. Same way if. You know Dabo's walking into that locker room. He's like, oh, they don't think you're one of the best four in the country. Yeah. Oh, they don't think, right? I mean. But then I, I do think that could I, – I do think – that's not my motivational tactic. So, I don't, I don't sit there and say, well, look, these people – because guess what? When, you, when they are all patting you on the back, yeah. then where are, you getting your, where are you getting your gratification from, right? That's it's right. all about your improvement. And that's, that's a message to the team. And you go out there, you, you want to be a big dog, you better go play like one. All right, well, go get on the road and find, like, a bunch of guys that run four 140s. You You're got, pretty good at finding uh, those got, guys. A bunch of them You're now. pretty good at it. I mean, look, man, this is what I said to them on the text. I said, bro, he lost Daryl and Tony Pollard, and, uh, and Patrick, he still pa- got the fastest dudes I've ever seen. And Patrick and, Taylor. And Patrick Taylor's played one game. If you – this is uh, – I know we are ready yep. to go, but at the end of the day, you sit there and you look at it. If you would have told me last year, midway through the season, that you got three junior running backs. You got Daryl Henderson, Tony Pollard, and Patrick Taylor, and you would not be playing with them for the majority of next year, right? What would we be? What would our team look like? Shows that recruiting matters, right? Man. And development. I mean, those guys, man. We got a great group of guys. We got guys that are that are you know elevated their games to a high level. But it also shows, Mindy, you know what what's what our program's about. You had something behind them. Yeah. You better, <laughs> right? I guess so, right? Because you, yeah, I, I, the, the, it's crazy. The Taylor thing is just. Well, I think I think we're getting close. I'm excited. But I'm about saying it. losing a starting running back at the oh. beginning of the year, and it has not been a topic. 
that's a credit to the team and the program because because he's an unbelievable player. Oh, I mean, he is. That's what people don't understand, like just how good he is. And so, he's an NFL guy. Oh yeah, a big physical runner too. Which oh. when you play Patrick Cincy, Taylor is when you an play NFL. Cincinnati. Well, you said go watch the Ole Miss game. I mean, it, 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 he he played. You know, what was it, three and a half quarters of Ole Miss game? And, I mean, he was, I mean, over four and a half, I mean, four and a half, five yards a carry. I mean, just getting after it. I mean, yes. he ran for 130 yards. But, you know, just not having him, he, you know, I'm, I'm excited, though. We we're expecting to hopefully have him back. By, by the a, next? So After what the it, bye week? That's what that's, that's what we're hoping for. Oh, wow. That would be, that adds a whole other dimension, oh, no, no, right? No, no, no doubt about it. Especially on those, like, maybe you won't have to go for all those uh, fourth downs. You know what I mean? been, been pretty good at it all. <laughs> so, even even the ones that even even like I told you with the bun, they still work out for you. I'm like, man, this dude is living right. Got a damn punter throwing it 40 yard under throwing a 40 yard bomb to a track star that's catching it in traffic. Life's good. That's coach. <laughs> that's coach. That's coaching. We practice that. We yeah, practice. Right. We practice it that way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for coming in, man. Yeah. You're the man. I Mike Norvell, it. head coach at the University of Memphis. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, we go.